Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere, and there's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy, and this is of particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. Speaking of Patreons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon, so a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to Adam Price, Fiber Oats, Bogey, Michael Kahn, Rob H, Ben White, Maximum Gravy, John Kays, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Will Brax, Mel B. Styles, Troy Shuka, Maris, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Neo The One, Lost Cat FE, Rob W, Open Minded, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Muted, Maria Nealands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, The Real Gabster, Liam Nedrick Jr., Abraham Mohammed, Adrian Quintana, Skeptic936, Life is Short, Texas Mike, and David Wayne Foster. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now I'll hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. Hmm. So I actually figured out a new uh, interesting thing in finances. What's it's that? called dark money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pre tell. Premise one, I have $1,000. Premise two, the bank says I have $800. Conclusion three, therefore I have $200 of dark money. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And don't forget parallax. Your dark money in relationship to someone else's dark money. <laughs> well, it's true, dude. That's why, uh, to be honest, uh, that's why I always go to the corporate headquarters to pay my bills. Because you can go up to the 100th floor where your money actually space-time dilates and is more valuable. <laughs> I love that. How about if you want liquid cash? Don't you have to go to sea level? <laughs> Yeah, if you want to liquidate. <laughs> you got to do dip correction. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, with, with, a, <laughs> with a bubble financial sextant, uh, we give you a horizontal to your eye line. But when you're at sea, you have to do dip correction. <laughs> so you can transpose it and have the same thing. Yeah, you know, like when they give you a graph of your plummeting financial records, you'd be like, dude, if I just take this graph and orient it this way, it's going up. That's right. That's right. Oh, all this time I was looking at that graph the wrong way. You mean I am broke? <laughs> oh, my gosh, too funny. I mean, it's, they're getting weirder and weirder. What's getting weirder and weirder? The dark money and ballers. I honestly think that creating theoretical math that effectively shortens the size of measuring devices is more rational than just accepting the results of the measure that disproves your theory. Say that again. It sounded good. They think that creating theoretical math that effectively mm -hmm. shortens measuring devices is more rational than just accepting that the measure disproves your theory. Yeah, very good, very good. 
Well, that's the whole point of dip correction. I mean, why is it that when you have a bubble sextant or an artificial horizon, where at the eye level, the bubble gives you true horizontal, same thing with the artificial horizon, at the eye level, uh, you have a true horizontal because you're shooting the sun or star uh, twice. And so it, uh, where the lines meet is right at your eye. So it gives you true horizontal. But at C, in order to get that true horizontal, which is what they want, they have to do dip correction. I mean, that should just wake them up, but it doesn't. So what does dip correction at C do? It gives them true horizontal. So that means once they correct for height above sea level, then that means from their hull of the boat at the level, uh, the it's like putting their eyes at the at, at the water line, all the way to GP of the sun. That's got to be horizontal. Then they just transpose it and say, "See, I can't get it with my eye because I'm in the boat and I can't. The bubble can't stay steady. So I'll just use the flat ocean to do it. But I have to make sure I get flat." So I'll minus my dip, 15 feet, 14 feet, 30 feet above the water line. Okay, got it. Now I've got a horizontal. I'll just transpose that. That's the same as if I had a bubble sextant. It's so simple. I don't think they realize how um, insane that they sounded at the moment because, um, you know, like the guy on the other day, the first thing he's doing is um, taking an angle measurement then he's turning it into a fantasy globe uh, and if he was really doing a sextant sighting he'd then have to put his circles of equal attitude onto a map and that map wouldn't be a globe now he'd have to turn that into a flat map so it goes from flat to globe back to flat i mean it's just insane how they how they're thinking I, I, it's just ridiculous yeah you, 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 that was a good summary See, it's, it's where your eye is at the telescope of the sextant that you need a baseline. And with the bubble, you get it. And with the artificial, you get it. But at sea, you can't get it. It's you're bobbing around. You can't use those two ways of determining true altitude, which is the right angle, by the way. So how do you get a right angle at sea if you ain't got a bubble to have the horizontal be at your eye line using the bubble? Well, you use the natural sea horizon. There's only one problem with that. You can't get your eyes on the level of the water. So there's your dip. Now, once you get your eyes on the level of the water, you've got two horizontal to the GP of the star. Now you just transpose that and say, there's my baseline. It's no different than if you were in an airplane with a bubble. I think the sea was. I was, doing, was, a, I was doing a lot of dip corrections last night, actually. Yeah, you were watching was, Super Bowl, right? You got it, dude. I was correcting that spatial location of the dip into my stomach. <laughs> what were you going to say, the other guy? I, f I forget your name. I was saying. I, forget. I was saying. Uh, I think the 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 sea the sea definition is the one really because. Obviously, you've got your oceans, and there are contained it's contained water uh, with a level surface. Um, you know, and that's 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 where that's it. At the sea level, it's it's contained yeah. for thousands of miles, and it, and we're using the level surface of the water. And that's it. And, and you want the correlation for that uh, is the artificial horizon with a pan or uh, some kind of container holding either mercury or some kind of uh, uh, viscous fluid like oil and you have to make sure the wind is not disturbing it so they have sides and they cover it and since all of these uh, things whether it's oil or mercury it finds its level in the pan or the container so sea level those those uh, uh, liquids whether it be mercury or oil or something else uh, they even use molasses. It has to be kept perfectly still in the artificial horizon, sides up, top on, so there's no wind agitating the top of the liquid. 
And when it's still and you see the reflection of the sun or star or moon, then you do your sighting. Well, isn't that interesting? Isn't that why it's sea level? And then now you got to have the liquid level in the artificial horizon and it finds its level? I mean, I, I, had, I had a guy the other day. He had to... Background noise, Neil. Sorry. I had a guy the other day on the, he had the screen up and he's drawing the the artificial globe and he's got the tangent point and you know it is the seven different horizons and I said rub that out I said you can literally sit pretend you're on a beach in Ibiza at Cafe Mambo and you're looking out at the horizon and there's a ship there in the center and then you've got a sun up towards the right you can actually physically you can imagine somebody taking a sighting you've got your level horizon you've got your boat you've got the sun and that's what it looks like and that's what it is you can see it happening you don't need a circle and three horizons and tangent points and things that you're not actually seeing when you sat on the beach looking out a boat taking a sextant reading they have to clutter uh how can I put it? I've said it so many times. I, I didn't get any of the research out of a flat earth sexton book or a flat earth navigational book. I, I don't think one exists because they've pretty much owned that space. Uh, they put out all these heliocentric pictures and globes, and but they when it's actual time to show how sexton works. They have to put a tangent plane. They have to have a flat surface for it to work because you need a right angle. So when they do that, that's the violation of the law of non-contradiction you find in these books. So they're pushing heliocentrism, spherical, whatever. But then when it comes right down to it, when they have to describe it and what a right angle is and what a 90 is and what dip correction is, they have to put a tangent plane. And then they say, well, we're actually getting it from the center where there is a equatorial plane, so still a plane, and they fool everyone with sunlight coming in parallel, which it doesn't. So what I've done and what anyone could do is just read any kind of book and see if there's any uh, logical consistency uh, demonstration, a violation of, of, of logic. So how can you say you live on a curved surface and every time you want the section to work you have to put a tangent plane and then you have to take it all the way out into space where the star or sun is because that's where it's directly over the earth and it's the funniest pictures you look at because it's right there telling you they're lying to you and see ballers can't realize that these books are in existence and that there are lies in books, that you can't spot lies in books. Well, of course, there's lies in books, there's lies in verbal speech, there's lies everywhere. It's all part of the new fallacy of Baal Fu, the Baal Fu fallacy. Oh, Baal Jitsu is not Baal Fu. No, Baal Fu fallacy is within Baal Jitsu. Ah. Uh, do explain, Master. Well, the Baal Fu fallacy, what, what you do is you concede the point in order to argue against the point you just conceded. Yeah, sounds very logical. Yeah, that checks out. Yeah, but don't get hung up on that. Yeah. Well, to, to be fair, most globe arguments are presuppositional frameworks anyway. So, you know, what does it matter? But it matters Whether you put in true premises or false. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, other than in this example, which is to say that for them, they have to make it flat for it to work with 90 years detailed by 10th. So they can't start with their, re, their presupposition in this instance. They have to start with it flat. So this is a different scenario. They have to relinquish their presupposition in order to get a 90 degree at the GP of the star and do triangulation. Therefore, it's got to be flat, and they're going to correct it so. 
interesting scenario that I didn't expect to see. John's describing that as saying you've got to relinquish what you're trying to fight against. So you've got to you've got to concede, sorry, what you're going to fight against. So they're conceding that yeah, you've got to have a flat angle. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have a flat plane to make this measurement. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't work on a flat plane. That's what they're doing. Nuts, but that's what they're doing. Nathan, allow me to read this. Uh, tip of the horizon is the angle by which the visible horizon differs from the horizontal at the eye of the observer. Right there should tell you why they do dip. It's height of eye correction. We know exactly. That. Thus, what are they talking about with on, the horizon? Hang on, hang on, Neil, please. Sorry. Thus, it applies only when the visible horizon is used as a reference and not when an artificial horizon, either internal or external, to the sextant is used. Pretty clear. And if it not if it's not used and you're still achieving the same method with ninety degree at the star at your position at elevation, then it has to be parallel to the plane below, which means Earth is flat, and ninety can be achieved parallel to the surface. So therefore, yes. no dip correction because you've corrected to the flat plane you've got below your surface, and the GP remains parallel at ninety degrees at any altitude. Correct, and the reverse is. The dip correction at sea when the bubble can't be used or the artificial horizon because there's too much agitation and movement of the boat. So when you correct to sea level, you can now say eye level can be the same. I'm transposing the sea level to my eyes at any level. Height, I'm sorry. They actually have it bad in both directions. Because on the other end, they have to assume that the Earth is the center of the universe and all the stars are fixed to a celestial sphere at a, essentially an equivalent distance, which doesn't even comport with their model either. And what's the measurement I'm if, they assume, a, if they assume the celestial sphere and they're taking a, a measurement? They're still taking it off a flat plane presupposed to be at the center of the presupposed yeah. spherical Earth, <laughs> them at the center and the stars at infinite distance. So they're still using a flat plane even in that example, aren't they? Absolutely. So if you if you do the math, check this out. If you do the math, you have infinite tangent planes, infinite off angles, infinite star distance, infinite dimensions, infinite universes. <laughs> Starts to sound ridiculous after a while. But no elevation angle until you take it to the center of a presupposed spherical Earth where the angle's being measured, if they claim all those things. But then you're working off a flat plane when you slice a sphere in half and make the top of the sphere, which would be their sphere surface, the stars and the angles that you're measuring to them. But you're still working off a flat plane at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth. Now, if you ignore the fact that you're in the centre of a rock in their ideas, and just draw out what they're doing when they take you to the centre, you're working on a flat plane with the stars having angles measured to them. And they show you how they've done the bait and switch with that exact methodology, and projecting the angle that you've taken and the arc of the tool onto the arc of the heavens and saying that that's the land now because we were at the center weren't we working off a flat plane no we weren't we never were we were always on the surface flat yeah let me finish up the quote the sea horizon is always below the true sensible horizon by an amount which depend upon the height of the observer's eye above the water surface. Again, making it absolutely clear why you do dip correction. If you're using a phenomenon as opposed to a tool to acquire your horizontal, if you're using the horizon, you're going to be correcting for the fact that you're not on the plane of the Earth, which is what you're referencing, the horizontal. The derivation thereof being the word that you're being used, you know, the, the word is horizon. <laughs> well, you're not at the sea. You're not. Your eye isn't at the sea level, so you correct for that, as it explicitly makes clear. Height of eye. I think I discovered a new fallacy, though, in the 
ball through fallacy. <laughs> okay, let's I'm hear it. What's, what's this? Right, the ball through fallacy. To concede the point essential to your argument, which opposes the point you conceded. Got to be given a decent Latin name. <laughs> but I think that it may be a new fallacy that created the globe religion. I don't know about creating the globe religion. I understand you're saying that the premise of deriving uh, elevation angles to Polaris and then use that derivation to give you a, a circumference which Brian details really, really well. I can't detail it as concisely as he does, but there we go. I understand that that's what you're saying, but that isn't in the mind's eye of the, the current man, is it? You know, that's something we're highlighting in their defeat. You're still right, though, aren't you? It is basically where it's come from. It is the origin, so I can't really get around that. I can't really say you're wrong, because that is where it starts, isn't it? You're going to hear me say this. John, you're going to hear me say this from now on. Don't get hung up on that. Yeah. The guy that was arguing with us last week that I trimmed out and put a few videos on um, in shorts, short form, uh, that there with that guy basically getting to the point where he's got to make an elevation angle measurement. It's going to be off a flat plane because it can't not be. And he told us not to get hung up on that point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I almost fell over the chair when he said that. Don't don't get hung up on the concession of the argument. We can still argue after I, you know, concede the argument. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, it, it's kind of like a circular argument with two different radiuses. Circular reasoning is typically what you. I'm sorry to have a go at you, citation. I'm not having a go. I'm agreeing in, in a way. But yeah, when you beg the question and start with your presupposition of a sphere Earth, then you can call that a circular argument. But this isn't that, is it? It's starting with the concession so that you yeah. can take an angle measurement. That's so it's something, it's something, it's different. I mean, I don't, I can't name it. That's why, it, not, yeah, absolutely. On. That's why I said it's a circular argument, but with two different radiuses. Well, you mean the flat radius around you when you're <laughs> triangulating? Is that what you mean? All right, I have an official no, name well, for it. What I actually said there was a was a category or anyway because arguments don't have radiuses, but you know, no, a circle but I was, has I, one I radius. I was trying to sandwich right? in. I was trying to make it up for you. You know, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt here. I'm trying yeah. to work your argument into something coherent in my own mind. Yeah, it's a bloody category it, area. What are you talking about? Can't have radius. It yeah, it's kind of like radii. It's kind of like I've been trolling. I've been trolling the Globers. You know that a circle only has a radius value of one and a circumference value of one in circumference and radial units, so that I can get them to argue to say no, a circle has this relationship between R and C, right? Because they're going to claim that when they do these quote unquote circles of equal altitude or they place them on a globe, that they then have a curvilinear radius from their point, right? Which is no longer a circle; it then becomes a dome. Yeah, they've got a bubble. But in reality, the measurements that are actually done are done with a flat radio. That's why it's labelled a circle of equal elevation. So for them to say this circle of equal elevation is actually not equal in elevation, <laughs> it's curving away from you. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. that defies the description in its first instance, doesn't it? Yeah, and remember, <laughs> like I always say that the majority of their arguments are actually just pointing to the weaknesses in their own arguments, like where's your edge, et cetera. What so do you mean here you we say have... that? It's me that they need a dome. It's me that says that. They need a dome, right? They need yeah. a dome. They need a dome. Uh, so yeah. where's where's okay. your dome? <laughs> yeah, well, where's your dome that they're talking about in terms of the area of equal elevation? This is convoluted. When they ask us for a dome, it's because they have gas pressure without a container, and it's a very weak part of their argument with gas pressure not pressing on anything. So they ask us yeah. where our container is because they don't have one. So it's easier to argue a and get us to justify a container, which they can argue against, than it is to justify how they have gas pressure, which they wouldn't have in their heliocentric world with the sky vacuum. So that's a repositioning of their weak part of the argument. Same with the edge. Where's the edge? What edge? Well, the edge on this pizza pie model presented by Flat Earth Society that's yours. Well, that's not mine. Yeah, it is, and it's got an edge. Where is it? Well, again, they have an edge. They have a physical geometric sphere edge for a horizon 
called Earth Curve, with boats going over it. So they ask us where our edge is to keep us occupied so we don't focus on their edge that they're claiming proves a sphere. So it's a reversal yeah, of the I, weakest part of their argument. There yeah. is another example. I just can't think of it. Yeah, but Nathan, just don't get hung up on that. Just don't get hung up on the devastating part of their claim. <laughs> well, that's called a vertical circle. That's when they create their dome yeah. with a meridian, which is a half a, a circle, a semicircle. So their vertical circle yeah, what... has an arc, arc to it. But it's really the sextant instrument that's got the arc. <laughs> Indeed, they've got the yeah, arc. But when they apply, when they apply what they think they're doing to a globe, and they call it a circle with a curvilinear radius, what they actually have in practicality is a dome. It's no longer a circle, and that's what I. Where's the, where's your dome, bro? Because your dome requires a curvilinear radius that could be demonstrated in the surface curvature of Earth's water. So where's that? But it wouldn't give them parallel right. lines at their zenith and GP of the angle measurement to the star that they're using for triangulation as soon as they describe having a curvilinear radius or a dome in your claim. And to get that dome, as Tenth Bands just pointed out, they're using a, a sphere that's cut in half that they're standing on a flat surface of and they're measuring the arc of the celestial sphere that they'll later bait and switch and change into the ground. So therefore that ground that was the angle measured to the star is no longer capable of deriving a flat radius value for a circle of equal elevation. Ergo, you're saying what they're left with when they move back to the surface after measuring an angle on a flat plane in the middle of a sphere that you're not standing on, when you get transposition back to the surface that's now curving, you don't get a radius value that's flat and straight. So the methodology doesn't work. Further to that, you haven't got parallel lines between you and the GP because they're moving off out on a curve now. So none of the mathematics that you used when you measured the angle will transpose into being able to derive a position off a flat plane with a circle, that's two-dimensional, of equal elevation, not curving away, not dome-shaped, not a transposition of a flat plane angle measurement that's then transposed from the sky. That would be your, uh, what do they call it? Um, what's the sky dome called when they're measuring it off a f flat surface at the centre of a sphere? Somebody remind me. Thanks for uh, that. Dome... Not zenith. You're not looking for zenith. I'm talking about the when you when you're talking about their sphere, but they cut it in half and then they draw out the celestial dome. I forgot what they call it. Oh, uh, uh, okay. I'm thinking there's Altaz, which is geographic. There's uh, RA and declination, which is the map of the stars. But you're not talking about that. No, I'm talking equatorial about plane. They... Say again. Are you talking about the equatorial plane? Equatorial plane. Thank you, John. Got there in the end. But that was painful. I'm sorry I didn't know off the top of my head. The equatorial plane. Right. When you're taking your angle measurement off the equatorial plane and then transposing that onto the surface, that's where you're left with a dome. And that's where Brian steps in and goes, well, when you're taking these measurements, you're taking a radial value to the outside edge of a sphere, and that's got to be a straight line. That's the value that you're using. That's what you're calculating to the base of the GP of the star when you do this measurement. That's the angle. That's the triangle. Can't be curved. So when they have this dome, get in there in the end, I'm nearly there. <laughs> That's when your housekeeping question comes into effect, right? How can you have an elevation angle measurement off a curved adjacent? Because that's what you're left with at the surface. You're left with a curved line between you and the GP. Well, then you don't have uh, reciprocal zeniths. You don't have parallel lines between them. You can no longer relinquish the correction if they're going to claim it's a globe correction for dip at that point which they do well if you're doing that you haven't got a parallel line moving up into the sky so that when you relinquish that dip correction with a bubble sextant it still meets at 90 degrees to the line of the star at its gp which will be parallel to the ground well, again that's not capable if you've got a dome as you're calling it which is the bent radii with curvilinear being applied to something that's plain a trick it's not curvilinear. It's planar. You'll still have to use ball food to even get that far, though. You know what I mean? Well, they've got to measure an angle before arguing right, about that's this, the right? Step. Before they've transposed it onto the equatorial plane and then moved it back out from the angle in the sky to being the angle on the ground for some reason, measured from the centre of a rock, right? Yeah, you're right. Before we do any of that, we've had to actually physically measure an angle. 
meaning we've got to measure it off a flat surface, a flat plane, an elevation angle. So, yeah, you've got to perform bull jitsu before you even get here. I still think that's a, what would that be, a denying the premise fallacy? I don't know. I'd love to know the name of it, though. Conceding your argument fallacy? <laughs> well, I mean, I think I, I discovered it in their religion. Yeah, we used to get it back in the day when they'd, someone like Rumpus would come on and he'd immediately concede the devastating part of his loss in the argument as his opening statement and then move on with the argument. Nathan, I put up two slides in uh, Master B. I, I just never heard that fallacy before. I think it may be a new one. I agree. You've got to give it a Latin name. <laughs> You've got to give it a Latin description, a Latin name that basically describes the fallacy. <laughs> then you can have it as yours. Right, Celestial Navigation, the fourth edition of George G. Bennett's Celestial Navigation. Yeah, so, and like before, we cite everything. It's coming from their position. So let's go to the next uh, image on page 15. Tip correction. The visible sea horizon lies slightly below a horizontal plane stretching out from the observer. Therefore, sextant altitude observations made using the sea horizon as a reference are too large and need to be corrected. The size of this correction, called dip, is always negative and depends upon how high the observer is above the sea surface, high of eye. For convenience, tables of dip for heights of eye in meters and feet are included throughout this book. It's over right there. He's basically saying my eye horizon is the same as the sea below me because I have to do dip to get my eye horizon. And they're the same after I do dip, flat, extended all the way to the GP. What's yeah. making me laugh as well is the, um, <clears throat> the, the jumping on dip as a correction for earth curve or whatever they're doing. But then when you ask them why don't they do dip with a bubble sextant, they'll say, well, I've already got me level. <laughs> you just, you just <laughs> That's exactly it. the point. <laughs> it, it is interesting that in some of the books, they want to push the narrative that the ball is falling away from you. And, and so their pictures draw those weird angles. But then when you find the ones that take more time to explain what's happening, like the one we've shown, the dotted line is the sea level and that solid line that goes sideways off from a circle is their geometric non-existing horizon and everything below sea level doesn't exist in reality but they have to show the picture so that everyone thinks the sex is working off a curved surface but it's not because it can't That's correct. Um, also, um, I don't think they realize that their idea of space plumbs, plumb blobs don't even hang to the center of the Earth, even within their own model. I mean, the, the picture what they do with splitting the globe in half is looking more and more like a flat Earth with a firmament on top. <laughs> Yeah, that's what they've done. They've measured it on a flat earth first, then they take it to the center so they can validate their 90, but they got it from the surface. Remember that video, to dip or not to dip? That is the correction.
Hello. Good morning, Arwen. Afternoon. Good afternoon. God, I got so trolled on my show today. It was so annoying. I started screaming and it only made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a fish. They're trolling you. Yeah, it's that same guy again. He even sent me freaking text messages. Oh, my God. I... Tell, tell them they can only troll you if they uh, give you super chats. Yeah, if only. Yeah, like that would room. work. Like that would actually work. Come on, it, it would work because they want, they they need to get their their anger out. And if you say if you troll, you're off the show. But if you pay the troll, that's fine. Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live and there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy, and this is of particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. Now we are joined by Neil, Tenth Man, Arwin, Brian's Logic, and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Hello! Hello, hello, hello. Good hello. <laughs> hey, hey, good morning. Hello, you enthusiastic lot. Very good to have you all. Any evidence of physical geometric sphere edge horizon, formerly known as the curve of the Earth? Well, I have people claiming that uh, it's geometric again. Black Swan, we discussed this on Ballbusters quite extensively. Yeah, you can't now start calculating for a physical geometric sphere edge horizon formerly known as Earth Curve when we've debunked it and shown that it's beyond the physical limitations of the geometry at radius 3959. Put in the horizon, geometric, at 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height and feet as per your globe Earth maths, and the black swan shows it's beyond those limitations. Ergo, the horizon is not geometric. What's that you say, Glober? Refraction? So not geometric then. Yes, we know. Two years of being told how refracted it is makes us make this statement absolute and certainly true. There is no geometric horizon. You wouldn't expect to see the geometric horizon. The geometric horizon only exists in the maths. So if you're calculating it out there, black swan. Well, I think you'll find that that's our global maths, Nathan, as it's a flat Yeah, earth. when we position their claim as... A modus Tolan's argument to debunk it based on the premise they lay out as their claim. It becomes our claim magically, doesn't it? No, no, it's still just their claim of an Earth sphere radius 3959 with every distance to the horizon being no more than 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height and feet. That's their maths for a globe. It's just we've debunked their physical sphere edge tangent point formerly known as the geometric horizon that you claim people are now using again and think they've got. No, we've only got one horizon. 
and the horizon in your begging the question proof of nothing perspective hijacking earth curve calculator was geometric before it was debunked by the black swan. Now it's Debun refracted. Yeah, debunking something without a proper scientific paper is not actually debunking. It's just a pseudoscience uh, rhetorical claim. We have pictures and we know that refraction works and we know that the reason why we don't see geometric uh, horizon at its actual position is because it's refracted by optical vision, which you use to see oh, the yeah. actual horizon, but you can't. Yeah, it is really. And we do have pictures of from space of the planet Earth and it's already done. Pseudoscientists have very little say to say. Okay, that's quite a lot of information to take on board. Let's deal with the last one first. You said that you got pictures from space. That would be a second law of thermodynamics violation, sky vacuum, which can't be real because if the sky was a vacuum to take pictures of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon debunked by the black swan, then the gas we breathe would fill that space. It's called entropy. So untrue. no, you don't, you don't have pictures of Earth curve from space. Further to that, you open... That's untrue. Further to that, you open by saying that we can see the geometric horizon, but then went on to detail how we can't see it because it's refracted. So if it's refracted, it's not geometric. Do you understand that? Yes, I do understand that whenever you look at the horizon, you're actually looking at the apparent horizon. There isn't... So not the geometric horizon, which we can't see then. So when I say you don't have a geometric horizon, we don't see it, that's absolutely factually correct and you've just backed that statement. You're confirming that we cannot see the geometric horizon then. It's not possible to be seen. According to you, it's refracted and can never be seen. So I'm right. You can't see it. Again, no, you're very, very wrong indeed. The reason is, is because you're actually denying and you're basically false, false equivalenting what I'm actually saying. What I'm actually saying is, when you look at the horizon, you're looking at the apparent horizon of the actual geometric horizon. The reason why you don't see the actual geometric horizon position, we're talking about the position, not the object of the horizon, not the body of water. The body of water is still obstructing the light that is coming from beyond. But no, because since we have different atmospheric conditions, different weather conditions, we're getting different refractions, uh, densities and uh, uh, numbers, which basically helps things actually that are further to actually be reappeared. Refraction but if you actually look at the picture of the black swan, Ryan, can you if you look at the picture you? of the black swan, if you look at the picture We heard Again, you the first since time. We heard you the first time. so And to... I heard you the first time, so okay. yeah, I so want to see, reiterate what I'm have... actually saying because you misrepresented what I said. No, no, I'll, I'll try and get You're an explanation again. the truth. Let's just see if we can do it with a back and forth without constantly talking through each other. Let's have a go. If then let the... me finish my point. I thought you had. We heard it twice. No, uh, you think you heard it twice, but I don't think the audience heard it twice. All right, go ahead. So again, to reiterate, because this is a very crucial point in the argument, this is not a silly point or a pivoting point. The point is, you claim that we don't see the geometric horizon, which is wrong. We are not seeing the actual geometric horizon position, position again. The thing is... So I'm claiming we don't see it, and you're saying we don't see it. My friend, the body of water is still there. So I'm saying we don't see it, and you're saying we don't see it. You've just said we don't see the actual geometric horizon, so we don't see it. Position. So we don't see it, then? The position. So we don't see the position. The actual position. The geometric horizon position isn't seen. If, if you... Man, listen, if... Stutter for me, bitch! You're saying we don't see it, I'm saying we don't see it, you're saying I'm wrong when we, I, say we don't see it. Then you go on to confirm how we don't see it and we're not going to see the actual geometric horizon. That's us not seeing it as I state. You're saying I'm wrong in that statement and then confirming how right I am. You're, because you're not being Jitsu. accurate enough. You're not being honest enough with your own argument. Not being dishonest. You do not, cannot, will not ever see the geometric horizon. That is a fact. And you have confirmed that by saying, no, we don't see the actual geometric horizon. Confirming what I am saying. Uh, position. Focus on the word position, son, because you're not really actually paying attention or you're actually intentionally misleading your own audience by actually 
false equivalating and misrepresenting or straw manning my argument. My argument is there is an actual geometric horizon. The reason why we say that you can't see the actual geometric The reason we say we can't see it, the reason I'm right and saying we don't see it, we can't see it, and you're about to tell me the reason why we can't see it... Scientists. So you're about to launch into why we can't see it. That's what you've just stated. Because the... It's be because... So you're now going to justify why we can't see it? Listen, buddy, you're not... Don't tell me that I'm your buddy. You are a piece of shit, lying, globe-believing fucktard who is simultaneously telling me that we can see a geometric horizon, but because of X, Y, Z, we can't see it. it. Of course you can see this is actual... Of course we can or of course we can't. Refracted light is an actual science. Optics is an actual science. We know how light works. It's an actual... Yeah, your light isn't refracting at a rate of our in terrestrial refraction based on a sphere belief. Your refraction isn't light bending through mediums. That's refraction. Your refraction is based on an R value. It's 7 over 6 of a radius. Terrestrial refraction. It needs R. Any response? Your refraction that you're claiming needs R. Again, uh, ask actual physicists when you actually guys want an actual uh, physical uh, reasons and understanding. Don't ask pseudo-intellectuals, pseudo-scientists. Sorry, that was a load of old nonsense that didn't respond to my... Hello, whoever in G+. That didn't respond to me. Yeah? You need R for terrestrial refraction because 7 over 6 of a radius, that's atmospheric, spheric, spheric being the bit that needs R, refraction. That's what you'll be using. Now, you're lying or ignorant when you describe that we understand how light refracts, because that's not atmospheric refraction. It's the second time I've said it. You've come back with some nonsense about me misleading the audience. No. Yes, I've you addressed... are very much misleading the audience. Shh! I've addressed your claim. Your claim is that refraction is something well known, and then you've detailed how light works. That's not atmospheric refraction. Third time I've said it. Then why do we have so many pictures? Why are you asking me a question? I've just debunked your claim that we need to take into account atmospheric refraction while you've simultaneously confirmed that which I have stated and you've claimed is wrong, which is that we don't see a geometric horizon. That's a fact. It's not no atmo day, my friend. Atmo sphere, that's sphere shaped air, requires R for your claim of refraction. And you get R from a geometric horizon that you are justifying why we can't see it. Simple. On rhetoric... You're rhetorically dishonest. Yeah, fuck off. Telling me I'm dishonest and I'm using rhetoric when I'm taking apart your claim of refraction based on atmosphere, sphere-shaped air. That needs R. That's what I'm doing. It's not rhetorical. It's a address to your claim of refraction. When you say we can't see the geometric horizon, which is where we started this, and started justifying why we can't see it with refraction, which you need R for. Let me, let me give you a challenge. How no, no. Me, Sorry, why am I getting challenged to something? I've just refuted your claim. Suddenly that means I need to be challenged with something. Maybe you need to grow a pair of balls and accept that your version of refraction, which is what you're arguing for, why we can't see the geometric horizon, because if it's refracted, it's not geometric, and you're arguing for how it isn't geometric, actually refracted, I'm refuting that by saying it needs are. And you're now in somehow delusional, impressional circumstances that lead you to believe that I need a challenge. Not functioning appropriately, maybe because you're so dishonest and you have distrust. So why does he keep calling me dishonest? I've refuted what he's claimed. I've described why it's a refutation of what he's claimed. He's claiming refraction in atmosphere. Sphere-shaped air on a globe. That needs R. You get it R. That R comes from the geometric horizon. That's the fourth time I've said it. All he can do is tell my audience I'm being dishonest when I'm literally taking apart what he's claimed. You're not consistent. You're not consistent. You're f oh, wow. What am I, whipped cream? Red flag. Oh. Sorry. My consistency isn't really relevant to your requirement for R that needs a geometric horizon, the same horizon you're justifying us not seeing with refraction that needs R. Fifth time. Again, because you're observing using optics and using vision, which is actually a, an immediate fact. It's an important fact when it comes to refracting light because this is... It's not refracting light when you do it with 7 over 6R. So just completely ignore my five-time rebuttal after telling me I'm dishonest and ignoring you and inconsistent. Somehow my consistency, like I'm bloody whipped cream, is relevant. No 
you aren't addressing what I'm saying because you've tried to claim that's bending light again when it's not. 7 over 6R in standard form, sphere-shaped air refraction. That's atmospheric refraction on a globe. Why we see it this way? Because we have Why does he just talk through everything I say? Every time I start because... addressing him, he just jabbers through every bloody word so he doesn't have to listen to it. I've repeated my reputation. There he goes word. again, audience. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the audience would like to tell that. me in comments how it's unreasonable that when I start talking, I shut his line down. But it's reasonable for oh, him to continue talking the entire time that I'm trying to refute his claim for the sixth time when he's claiming the bending of light is atmospheric refraction when he claims refraction on a globe. It isn't. I've told him six times. And all he's done is talk through every single rendition and told me that I'm inconsistent. That's what he's done. You so are far. a liar. And call me a liar. Yeah, that's what he's done. Call me a liar for telling him that his atmospheric, spheric being sphere-shaped, that's refraction on a globe, needs R for the sphere-shaped bit of it. Now, that's seven times I've told him this, but apparently that makes me dishonest. There is your scientific paper, please. This so why is he now challenging me to produce scientific documentation when I've provided no claims of science whatsoever? It's inconsistent proof and Sorry, experiments. Sorry, somebody just kicked Go his ahead, out. He's not listening to Where's me anymore. He's stopped. Paper? He's switched off and just gone into... So he was projecting. When he yes, claimed he was I was using rhetoric... What he's doing is chanting. That's rhetorical. He's chanting rhetorically straight through it. me. Acknowledging my point, you're not being inconsistent. You're I have point. acknowledged your point. Your point we was the refraction. The oil rigs. So you're not listening. Again, he won't. Not listening. How badly you led the Another unreasonable globe believer for the audience's benefit. This isn't a reasonable conversation I'm taking part in. Now I'm staying tonally as calm as I can be perceived. But he's not listening to me anymore. Telling me I'm not addressing his point, not listening to his point. Yeah, I am. He said refraction. Said it was based on light bending. I've addressed it eight times. God damn it, listen, if you're not going to... Now you're going to blaspheme. Yeah, I have actually addressed your point and concisely summarised your point on eight separate occasions. Yeah, it's... Inconsistent evidence is not a base of a... It's not a rebuttal. Longer. Shut up, D G plus, please. G plus, please. That's not a rebuttal. Your black swan is irrelevant. It's just an anomaly because we can see it in... Well, we weren't talking about the black swan. We were talking about your claim of atmospheric refraction. Refraction on a globe. To get around the black swan when you claim the reason we can't see the geometric horizon is X. So that's where we started. Now, your X is refraction, and your refraction on a globe when referencing a sphere Earth radius 3959 as done in the Black Swan. That needs R for your refraction. That's nine times. Do you know with a science? Do you know optical science? No, you don't. Which... Sorry, optical science? What the hell are you babbling about? Who are you? Who are you to claim this? Who are you to... You don't know what science is, Right. Let's just summarise the last point. You don't see a geometric horizon. This fool came here to tell us why we don't see it while simultaneously claiming that we do. But we just don't because of refraction. So we don't see it because of refraction. And he needs R for his refraction. Now he's on to telling me about optical science. What? Truth. We don't get money sharing truth. We don't make people pay us for... Smash the super chat if you like my truth. If you like me telling this fundy nine times that his refraction in sphere-shaped air needs are, therefore is not the same as light bending. Yeah, it's mathematical numbers moving around an R-based sphere. That's not light bending. That's nine, I think, ten times. Now, you can support this truth, fact, or you can listen to this Dumbo tell you that you don't get paid for telling people the truth which is that his refraction in sphere-shaped air needs are, and that needs a geometric horizon to get it. We don't even need to go to that place. Uh, you... No, we don't need to go there. Let's ignore the truth, yeah? And just go somewhere else immediately about my understanding of optical science. What complete nonsense. Well, the entire countries believe us, and they're with us, and it's...
it's so ridiculous to be believing in flat earth these days man you have better things to believe in you have better things to fight on this flat earth is a losing game it's sorry is this your response to me saying that your sphere shaped air needs r and that's based on the geometric horizon you say we can't see because of the r based refraction that's 10 times I oh, check it out, by the way. Godzilla proved you wrong. He says, I like it, and gave me $6.99, paid me for my truth, when I took apart your claim of sphere-shaped air refraction. The reason we can't see the geometric horizon? Affect your sight. Things that affect light affect your sight. Very logical. Very logical, Netanyahu. Very logical. Listen to logic, you little logical man. Yeah, I am. I'm listening. Go ahead. Give us your logic. Things that affect lights affect your sights. Sphere-shaped air is an R-based mathematical derivation based on an R that's been derived from a geometric horizon. That's only in existence in maths. This is not light and seeing things. Your maths is not visual or optical. It's Muppet vision. Yeah? So why are you babbling on about this optical science? Total nonsense when that's not what your sphere maths is. You're a pseudoscientist. So now he's calling me names. Just pointed out that he's claiming optical science. L ludicrous nonsense. Anyway, the fact that his maths for a sphere Earth radius 3959, that's curve maths, isn't based on optics. It's based on Muppet vision. Removing optics completely. Image is a prime. He's just not listening to me anymore. He's not listening to anything I respond to him. He's just talking straight through everything I say. It's pointless trying to communicate with people like this. All he's got for me is name calling and complete ignorance of everything I respond to him with. Not on the same level. You are a pseudo scientist. It's honest. And he's just still calling me names. Calling me a pseudo scientist. I've not claimed any science to be called a pseudo science. You clown. What are you talking about? Pseudo science is a claim of science where there's been no application of the scientific method. I've not claimed any, you stupid clown. But yet you're going to call me that name repeatedly, like it has some meaning or relevance. It's just silly. Dealing with idiots that don't know what science is and will claim I'm a pseudoscientist when I've not claimed any science. Yes, you're claiming any... That's very high-pitched! I'm not claiming any science to be called a pseudoscientist. I've not claimed to have utilised a method that hasn't been employed... That's the scientific method. You don't even know what that is. You don't know what science is. That's obvious. N no, you don't. It's no, no, you don't. Yeah, no, you definitely don't know what science is. You were talking about optical science. Natural science deals with phenomena. Yeah, not just seeing stuff. That's why I scoff when you said optical science. Science conduction. It's just not listening it's not to you. It's not a scientific not listening. Prick. Listen Prick. Yeah, this isn't a conversation anymore. It's I talk and you talk straight through the oh. middle of me, like you're doing right now. You're a dishonest scientist. Now, and just calling me names when you listen to anything I do say. You don't provide scientific evidence. You don't provide... Sorry, nobody wanted scientific evidence. You haven't asked for any scientific evidence. You've presented a claim that we can't see the geometric horizon because of refraction. I've pointed out that globe refraction needs are, and that's derived from a geometric horizon. That's what I've done. All you've done is ignored every single word of it and spoken through and talked through every single rendition, that's the 11th, of the debunk of the claim you laid down here. Compare and calculate and show us how we are false. It's not listening to a word. Go I'm ahead. Saying. Go ahead. Go write a he scientific paper science, and show us how... This dude claims science. Wanna... He's the super That's scientist. real science. Real scientists talk with scientific papers. No... Oh, no, they do no, not. No, they don't. That's wrong. And yeah, another globe, another glo globe believing dick that doesn't know what science is, based on papers. Voice? No, based on cause and effect reasoning, hypothesis based experimentation. You don't know what science is, but yet this guy has decided that nobody in Discord can hear anything I say. That's all he's doing. Let's put him on screen and highlight to the audience what's going on. This is the guy we're talking to, right? Every time you see this light flashing on ZX man means he's just talking straight through the middle of everything I say. For example, if I say you can't get R for your refraction because it's got from a geometric horizon you're justifying as not seeing. Let's see if he calls me a name. Again, you alleged scientist, your science 
denialist. So he's just called me two names. They're giving him a clear rendition of the argument in response to his claim, and he's called me two names that aren't relevant. No science being claimed by him and refuted by me. There's a claim of geometry based on R with geometric horizons to give you R to give you refraction. That's the argument. So what do I get in response? As you can see on screen, talking straight through the middle of this entire explanation for his loss. So he doesn't have to hear it. That's why the light is constantly flashing as I'm talking. It's been no pause. I've just detailed how he's lost. He hasn't listened to a single word I've said. The general audience, I sincerely pay your attention because you guys won't, won't be deceived by me. I don't share undisclosed cycle, science. I don't share unfactual evidence. When you hear the black swan, it's the, their argument is, is to basically disprove our radius, to disprove how long or how far the horizon is, and to disprove the geometric horizon. But they always glance over refraction, and they always glance of what our actual argument is. Our actual argument is the geometric horizon is there because the sphere is round. And because things get abstracted by the geometric horizon, the only way for things to be appeared beyond the geometric horizon is by light refracting through the atmospheric conditions because we have different temperature, different density, and different mediums. And this is how this allows light to actually take not a straight path, but in fact, a bending path. This is an actual science. It's called light refractions, light bending light refractions there are many phenomena. you have mirages it's an actual thing if you don't know just ask any physicist in any university and they will gladly explain your optics they will gladly explain your weather conditions don't you explain what's optics then hold on hold on shout out to you dada he says love the whipped cream nathan before you ask that brian in your explanation you said atmosphere I said black swan is a false evidence. It's an inconsistent evidence showing an anomaly. and It can be taken as an argument and, and should be dropped by the flat earth communities. So don't tell me what I need to drop. Complete non sequitur response. I point out, as I've argued 11 times, that in his diatribe that we listen to without interruption, yeah, notice he's still see an interrupting every of single word that I say. That still interrupting every single word I say in response. I've pointed out to him that in his explanation, which was not interrupted, he used the word atmosphere. That's all I've said. And he's reiterated part of his argument that is in no way relevant to what I've said. Atmosphere. That's sphere-shaped air. As per the 11 renditions of me pointing out that your atmospheric refraction is based on R. That's 12 times. Again, uh, Globers did not invent atmospheric refraction after Nathan Oakley, the magnificent genius, has provided you with the black swan argument. It's a very odd thing. We already know about it. Many uh, surveyors use uh, light. So he's completely ignoring me. My point, it's based on R. 7 over 6R in standard form, atmospheric refraction. For that value, you need R. You get R from the geometric horizon you are claiming is refracted with an R-based refraction. Why are you jerking off with the black swan then? Why are you telling me that I'm jerking off? It's disgusting. I'm not jerking off. I'm pointing out for the 13th time that paradoxically your refraction needs an R that's come from a geometric horizon you're saying is refracted. Now, you can't get R because you get it from a horizon you can't see if it's refracted and the value it's refracted with is based on a measurement from the horizon that you're refracting. It's 14 times. So it is... So, again, funny enough that Nathan Oakley can't really reply to my argument. He just says some fant fantastical numbers, and uh, clearly the audience don't know what the... So why are you addressing the audience rather than the point that you need R and you get it from a geometric horizon you're refracting? Why aren't you addressing my response? I've given it you 15 times. Just because you don't like my response, it's not my fault. Sorry, you haven't given me a response. You've just personally attacked me with an ad hominem fallacy each time I lay it out. 
There's been 15 attempts to point out that you're paradoxically using our based refraction that's derived from a geometric horizon you're refracting. Actually, it doesn't make you more right. You're still a pseudoscientist. Let me finish no, my... You're still calling me names. He's calling me a pseudoscience. We're still not claiming science. He still doesn't know what science actually is. And that's his ad hom. The funny, the funny thing is, you, there is something called pseudoscience and bad science. You're not even getting... So, no address whatsoever to the R-based refraction he's using that needs a geometric horizon to get when he refracts the horizon that he can no longer get it from. Now we're talking about what science is. Complete non-sequitur fallacy. After my 16 renditions of my response to his claim that we do see a geometric horizon, and here's how we don't see it. Refraction based on R I can't measure anymore. Praising my question to be a better individual. So would you think it is scientifically, uh, uh, what do you call it? Is, it? is it a scientifically attitude of you to provide the black swan as an argument uh, to basically refute the globe model? If so... So why are you answering your own question, if so? Was it rhetorical? Did you want to ask and answer your own question? Answer. Answer. Oh, I will. No, it's not scientific. It's a logical consistency argument. Anybody who had the first clue about what science was would understand that Modus <laughs> Toland... So straight away, he's interrupting me, answering his question about whether or not it's scientific, whether YouTube would accept it as scientific, like that's relevant, non-sequitur fallacy. And I'm saying, no, it's a logical consistency argument. Based on your globe Earth mathematics at radius 3959 and the distance to the geometric horizon being defined by you in the globe maths as 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height and feet. That's the distance to the geometric horizon measurement according to your maths. That's not science to answer your question, which was stupid and demonstrated that you don't know what science is, to be asking me whether or not a logical consistency argument would be allowed by YouTube based on its scientific credentials. Guys, if, if you guys really want to know which is real science, go ask real scientists. Don't listen to this hacker, this delusional guy. So why are you now appealing to the audience rather than addressing the fact that no, in answer to your question, Modus Tolan's black swan argument isn't science. You asked if it was science or acceptable by YouTube as science. No. But you'd know that if you understood what science is, and you do not. You are a fool. You are a it's guy scared. who pretends to spread truth and yet get money. You get paid for telling fake truth. What fake truth? <laughs> Sorry, is it fake truth that terrestrial refraction, as per your quote, at mo sphere, end quote, needs are? Is that a false truth? Actually, infinitely time. He's not, he's not listening. He's laid a claim that I'm lying, basically. False truth. Don't need R for atmospheric, sphere-shaped air, refraction. According to him, that's false truth. It isn't. But he wants to come on my show live, tell my audience that when I detail that which he is ignorant of in his own claim, somehow I'm disseminating mistruth. No, I'm not. That is a fact. It's just where you lost. Because to claim refraction to move the geometric horizon, geometric being Earth measurement horizon, and that Earth measurement gives you R for the refraction you're using. That is 16 times I've disseminated truth and fact about his claim that he doesn't even understand. And debunking it in the process because you can't use an R-based refraction if the R came from a geometric horizon. You're moving with refraction based on R. 17 times. Very, it's a, it's a very easy something. It's a very easy thing to do for the audience to actually look at the black swan pictures of pre, many different atmospheric conditions, and you can clearly see that. There it is again. Atmosphere, sphere-shaped air. R-based refraction is his claim. That's 18 times but he still wants to blart it out like it's got some merit when I've res refuted it 18 times. He's scared. Again, he keeps, scared he keeps smooting me on the server because he doesn't want the truth to come out. It's a tactic. He's a mod abuser. He doesn't... This there's guy, there's no scary. real moderation. He's the mod and the debater as well. This is very oh, unfair. Man. It is. Sorry, why is he bleating about how unfair it is when I've detailed 18 times the same response to his claim that you can't see a geometric horizon, but you can because it's refracted, meaning no longer geometric. And what's it refracted with? Sphere-shaped air-based refraction, as he detailed when he said atmosphere. Now, I'm summarising his point and refuting it. But yet all he's doing is appealing to the audience and telling them that I'm a liar. I'm not. 
Why, why, because I care about the anything? audience. I care about the information that the Oh, wow. Well, well, what's your show called? People. What's your when show? You, sign... you care about the audience? Oh, it's vast. What's your show called? Uh, when you're broken What's up... your show called? You care about the audience so much. What's your show called? What? Uh... What's your show called? Again, the black... Was that a lie? Was that a half-truth? Are you here disseminating truth about caring about audiences when you don't actually have a show? See, I care about my audience. I've got one to care about. You don't, but you're here disseminating half-truths about how much you care about the audience you don't have. By the lies he says. So lies about audiences you don't have. He survives on it. Lies about audiences you don't have. Hold on, there's an actual conflict of interest with, it, with, with what... Sorry, you said you care about an audience. You don't have one. I do, to care about and disseminate truth to. Truth about atmospheric refraction, sphere-shaped air that needs R and would need a geometric horizon to get. Now, you've constantly accused me of lies here. You've just lied about having an audience to care about. You haven't got one. I have. Earth's flat. The claims of a geometric horizon to block things are being refracted by clowns like this guy. You haven't got a geometric horizon. Geometric meaning, meaning measured and physical. Earth curve. A physical obstruction to boats and buildings that, according to this clown, is being refracted with an R-based refraction that's based on the measurement of that horizon that is, according to him, refracted. Meaning we can see it when we can't see it. That's what we've got from him. Listen, buddy, if you really want to know how things are getting measured, how things... You should actually go and ask scientists when they talk about... Scientists? For measurements? That's maths! Maths is measuring, science is the establishment of cause and effect. You don't know the difference. If you want a measurement of something, go to a scientist. What a complete idiot. You, I... Sorry, you are thick. Let's just get it clear for the audience. If you want something measured, you might go to a mathematician or someone with a tape measure. You wouldn't go to a scientist, you stupid idiot. Just screen hopping, my punch will be teleported to your screen and punch right in the face. Oh, now he's threatening me physically. Oh, how beautiful. <laughs> he wants to beat the flat area. You want to beat the flat out of that flat plane that we're going to need when we take elevation angles to stars or derive your radius value with measurements to Polaris or use that R that didn't get any capabilities of being derived anymore that that are that needed a geometric horizon do you want to punch me in the face over the fact your atmospheric refraction needs that r value is why you don't see the actual geometric horizon because we don't see the geometric we don't see the actual geometric horizon he just said ladies and gentlemen that was his opener his opener was to say I we do you see it about that nathan Thing. It is a real thing. Do we see it? Do, we see it, but it's not in the real position. We don't see the geometric horizon in the actual position. Quote, we don't see the geometric horizon in the actual position. Actual position being geometric, capable of measurements. So we'd have to see it to measure it to be geometric. He's saying it's not in the actual position. Well, the actual position would be the geometric position that you'd measure. But we don't see that, do we? So, in conclusion, this clown has come here to argue how we do see a geometric horizon that isn't in the actual position. That would be the measurable geometric position. Yes, show your truth. This is how you, this is the way you talk, Nathan Oakley. And they what truth? That's right. This is how I talk to you truthfully. When I confirm that which you have said about not seeing the geometric horizon and why, you're telling us how we don't see it. That's what's happening here. And you're moaning about the fact that you can see it when you simultaneously describe how we can't and declare how we can't see it in its actual position, meaning we can't see it. Precisely the thing you're fighting against. Which is the fantasy. You're living in a fantasy. You believe in a fantasy, la la la. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, was that rhetorical? Saying the same thing three times. Living on a turtle. Is there a turtle? Sorry, I don't claim that. Straw man, I don't claim we live on a turtle. Why are you just making stuff up? Is this your half-truths again? Saying, I claim we live on a turtle? Just going to make up lies that I haven't claimed? What a disgusting lying pig. Did God made a pizza planet? Sorry, now he's claiming that I say we live on a pizza? So another lie, another half-truth disseminated to the audience you don't have, and I do. Here to disseminate lies to you, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody claims that here. 
So that's just a lie, a half-truth you made up. He just said... Uh, no, it's actually true. You say it's going to be on a fat planet, which is actually a piece of planet. Take a breath for a minute. You just said he believed in the fantasy. You're the one projecting your fantasy of something you can't see, but say it's there and cannot be measured. You're the fantasist here. Well, saying calling me a fantasist doesn't make you right anymore, baby, because we have actual okay, data, baby. we have actual proof, we have actual picture, we have actual evidence, we have consensus from every fucking country, every fucking government, every fucking individual who actually goes to science and learns science, learns physics, learns mathematics, which Nathan Oakley is not one, which all of you aren't one, by the way. Don't fucking claim you're even close to be a scientist. You're fucking pseudo-scientists, pseudo-intellectuals, the furthest from the truth. You get money because you spread dishonesty. You have a community you try to feed on. You're dishonest cocksucker. Okie dokie. So shout out to Multi Tom Tom who says, Flat Earth Debate 1591 shows and nobody has proven the globe. Say no more. Thank you very much for the super chat, Multi Tom Tom. Did you want to share your pain a bit more, Zet Man? Uh, I don't uh, listen to pseudoscientists. Sorry, you can either share arguments or shut the fuck up. Oh, okay. I'll give you my argument. The R-based refraction you claimed when you said sphere-shaped air, that's atmosphere, was derived from a geometric horizon that you can't see. You can't get the actual point of it. That's what you told me. You can't see the actual geometric horizon to measure it, to get an r to use for sphere shaped air refraction, which is what you've used. That's my rebuttal. I think I've given it you. 20 yeah, your rebuttal times. is very wrong. And on I, I, I each and every one of the 20 separate occasions I, I, I've given I, I, it I, I, to you, I, I, you've chanted straight over the top of it. Maybe it's unreasonable that I've got a mute button to shut these wankers up when they chant through 20 renditions that they're simultaneously saying I haven't given them at all. Why are they saying I haven't given it them? Well, because they've chanted straight through the middle of it in the hope that they don't have to listen to it. We can see ships sink bottom up when. What, the geometric horizon physical obstruction that's refracted? <laughs> Again, refraction doesn't. Go so it's not being blocked by a physical geometric sphere edge horizon then? You're now about to launch into how it's not physically blocking it, it's actually a refracted horizon. You complete clown. I say, provide your scientific paper. So why you... is it every time he loses, he starts launching into a request for scientific papers? He's just claimed that boats and buildings are blocked by, that would be a physical geometric sphere edge horizon. As per the maths that says the Earth curve will get in the way at 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height and feet. Yeah, that's the black swan claim. Your claim that boats and buildings are going to be blocked by the physical geometric sphere edge horizon was immediately met with the disclaimer that actually refraction, blah, 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 blah. So not a physical obstruction then. Refracted horizons blocking the boat, is it? No, you can't have refracted horizons blocking boats, clown show. Maybe we should Listen, see buddy. if he has a scientific experiment to prove or disprove his claim. Just my... Maybe well, he can lay out all the steps of the scientific method for his experiment. Well, technically, a refracted curve could still be blocking things around it if the Earth was a globe. However, it isn't. And you can't have an R value for your globe if you do, right? I, I mean, this is so up. retarded. Assuming that the only way you can actually measure the radius by actually looking at the uh, oil rigs, like there's many ways you can measure the radius. And actually, you don't even... Listen, you don't you need don't to go to extreme weather. You don't need okay. to fucking look at the, the fucking atmospheric ready. weather like the fucking one in the oil rigs, buddy. You want to eat your mic your, a bit Your more. fucking weather is an anomaly. Your Maybe fucking a few more swear words. weather is an excuse. <laughs> you should take measurements all over the year and look at the normal conditions of the atmospheric <laughs> conditions and take the measurement then. Then you can measure oh, the can almost... Oh, really? Oh, really? Plus From where are you? Yeah. No, no, no. no. Just, just let him tucker him... Look, guys, guys, just let him tucker <laughs> himself out. He's way too triggered. He's eating his mic, swearing at us. Yeah, telling us we can ignore the atmospheric conditions, the same ones that I pointed out that would need R when he claimed them about 10 minutes ago. Now he's saying we can ignore them. Just let him go. Let him eat his mic and tell me that I'm a fucking pseudoscience while he tells me to ignore the atmospheric conditions that were previously being claimed to move the geometric horizon into a position that no longer makes it geometric. Now he's telling us we can ignore all that, right? Hey, moron, you don't... Where is your proof consistent? 
Where is your consistency? You don't have to repeat yourself 40 times. Everyone I need to repeat it. Please make your point once and then let someone respond to your point. Your points are not even challenging. But repeating the same question 46,000 times makes you feel as though you're winning the argument. Calling me it's not a challenging is not making it any more less challenging. And also, when they just talk straight through somebody making a devastating point. So, Flat Earth Solar was in the middle of pointing out how just chanting the same exact things 47 times through the top of anybody trying to refute them might feel like you're winning, but it isn't. Now, he didn't get to the end of that statement. Zetman just started talking like he's doing now, straight through the top of anything devastating. We have proof, we have data, we have evidence, you don't. This is chanting, it's called rhetoric. That's what you're doing, rhetorical, over and over again, saying that you've got proof. You've presented it. You, you presented your claim, your claim about the black swan, tried to refute it by saying you've got atmospheric conditions and refraction, the same ones you're now telling us to forget about. Education, Nathan Oakley. What's your education? Are you going to launch into another ad hominem attack when I'm taking apart your sphere-shaped air-based refraction claim to take apart the geometric horizon that we can't see because of refraction? You think you need to attack me personally based on my education status? That's called an ad hominem fallacy. Doesn't address my refutation of your claim of atmospheric refraction. Hello? Your audience deserve an honesty from you to tell them what's your education level that you got. Nobody cares what his education level is. They only care. They do, they do. Trust me, when you go to the doctor, they really do, man. When you go to a scientist, when you go to the engineer, they really do, man. They really do, trust me. People like you, you don't because there's a benefit to, you, to get you money to mix. You're not listening. Nathan, it was to you. I was friend, talking to Nathan. Nathan, Brian. What the Brian. Of a scientific Nathan, what's your education? Brian, he's not listening to a word you say. He's just, just over chanting. Yeah. So even though Flat Earth Soul you, Nathan. Is, now he's doing it again. So even though Flat Earth Soul has explained that what people are trying to respond to his claim, in this case, his claim is that education is critical. We heard you. But you just keep repeating it. No, 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 no. So now it's no, 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 over the top of me. Yeah, Brian was trying to respond to yet another claim that you've made. But unfortunately, being a triggered globe believer, knowing damn well that you're losing this argument badly, you're going to chant through every single attempted response to anything you claim in the vain hope that that will feel like you're winning. All about the money. See, now it's just chanting personal attacks at me. Literally not listening. Brian was trying to respond to you. It's not going to work unless I shut down the line. What's your education then? Tell us. See, we've heard your question. What's your education is the question. Nathan, okay, what's your education? We heard. Yeah, we heard. You didn't listen to Flat Earth Solar point out that asking the same thing 50 times when anybody attempts to make a response isn't winning. Now, Brian had a response for you. Let's see how long he gets. How tolerable will it be? Go ahead, Brian. So you're not going to answer my question? Zero tolerance. Telling us that we're not going to answer his question. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> wow, this is probably the most triggered funding delusional. we've ever had. Those people are delusional. They're speaking out of... Yeah, it's still on this the personal attacks. This is the asshole attacks. that was spamming in my chat this morning, isn't it? It's very, you, isn't very it? Listen to the experts. Listen to the experts of the matter. Go to the real doctors. Don't listen to pseudoscientists. Please do, they? do yourself a favor. Well, Don't do listen they? to those hackers okay. and liars. Who are they? Okay. Who are they? Uh, I'm still waiting. What's your expertise? What's your education? I want to know more you about you so I know if I can trust you. They are get you? money to who, teach. Who are you they? Go to them. Who are these people? You said go to the experts. Who are you talking about exactly? The audience. So the audience are the experts, are they? The audience need to go to the experts. Yeah, not who to are they? To like quantum arrays. It's too thick and triggered. Be experts, <laughs> Nathan. Come on. Yeah, he so experts. you say go to the experts. I say, who are they? You respond, the audience. I say, the audience, the experts. You say, no, the audience need to go to the experts. Yeah, I'll try again. Triggered Fundy. Experts, who are they? Are you a physicist? Are you, are you a physicist? Me? A physicist? There's a fair building. Are you a physicist? No. Then why the fuck are you talking are about you physics? Are you a stuttering Fundy? Do physicists get paid? Sorry, do, do I need to be a, a baker to some talk about do, bread? Some of them do. Sorry, I need to be a baker to talk about bread, do I? Oh, some of them do, some of them do. I am a physicist. I, I am actually a physicist. I don't get paid. So not, not a professional physicist, then? 
No, not really. No, not I don't get paid for my you're education yet. So you're not a physicist you're not then? A physicist. Really? <laughs> A bit like the a geometric horizon. No, 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 I no, am no, a physicist. No. I'm a What's physicist. A hypothesis? For God's sake. I am a physicist. Now, here's all the reasons why I'm not a physicist. <laughs> Pseudo scientist. This is who you are, Nathan Oakley, and you can't face it. This is the actual truth. You the Go to a university, and the people will laugh at your fucking face, man. You, you, get... you are a you are a humiliation. You're a you're, you're an actual embarrassment to your own nation. You are at the bottom of the barrel of every human civilization we have come to. We have built vaccines. We have built rocket spaceships. We have a, the ISS. We have built many amazing things, and still believe that we live in a flat pizza plane. Pizza, yes, we live in a pizza planet. That's what you say. And we're covered by the dome that God made us so he can protect us from aliens. That's what is the case, yeah? No. Would you like me to respond in the same way I responded originally to that claim that you've got the ISS and pictures from space? Uh, what's seems your like, education seems again? seems like it's back on to claiming I haven't got an education or I need to justify my education status. So you've made another claim about the ISS. I'm trying... Uh, what's your education? I respond. made a claim that you are not uneducated. Kick him out. Education? Kick him out. Just kick him out. I'm done with him. I'm trying to respond to your claim. Now you're not going to take part anymore. Yeah, he said we've got pictures from space in the ISS. No, we haven't. That takes place in yeah. my original... <sighs> my original refutation. No, sky vacuum. Gas would fill it. Totally and completely ignored by this chanting, triggered, fundy muppet. No. If you add the ISS in a sky vacuum, then the gas we breathe would fill that vacuum because it's an empty space for gas to fill. Gas expands in all directions to fill the availability of volume it has to fill. It's called entropy. That's the second time I've had to detail it. Why? Well, because the first time I detailed it, it wasn't listened to. It was chanted through completely, ignored. And I was called a liar, only here for money. When I detailed something that's definitely established well and truly in our realm. That's the second law of thermodynamics. But no, that makes me a liar, of course. Go ahead, Brian. Sorry, Nathan. I didn't realise you were going to you were going to deal with what you just said there. Uh, so I apologise for stepping on, your, stepping on your toes. But I think what this guy wants is an unpaid debate with you for two hours on a neutral platform. <laughs> would you do that, you would? My God. Spend two hours listening to that. That's what they want. They want us to go and spend two hours having a debate with that. This guy can't For have free. a debate. He can only talk over you constantly. So that's most of them. Whether they talk over you or not, they're just completely ignoring what you're saying. Most of them are not well, even trying to give a rebuttal. He gave away his mindset uh, at the, when he started appealing to the audience. He's afraid. His reality is a consensus reality, and he is scared to death that because he can't answer these questions that people might start just accepting the truth of Earth's flat nature, and it scares him to death. This is what the sextant's done, man. It is. I just think he's a liar. Like, I don't even think he's actually a physicist. Like, if physicist. he was, then he would lay it down. He would lay down the proof that he is a physicist, that he would actually understand science and the hypothesis. He wasn't even doing that. I think he's just a straight-faced liar. Triggered funny troll. No, Arwen, remember, he said that he was a descendant of a scientist. That's his proof. Well, to be fair, a lot of kids go to university or school and they take, like, a physics course, therefore qualifying them as a physicist. These type of people are psychos, though. I mean, these people will actually probably try and stab you if he was in front of you. That's how fucking crazy they are. That's how obsessed they are with the globe. That is true. That is, globe, they more obsessed with flat earthers. I don't even think he knows anything about the globe, really. He's just hating on flat earthers. What, what you're saying is there's nothing more dangerous than a cornered animal. And that's what they are. They're cornered animals. You could smell the fear on it in his voice. I mean, it, it was like he was falling apart. His world was falling apart as he was talking to you. Yeah, they're cornered space monkeys on their spinning water ball. No, he was getting really triggered. We need to, I do think we need to upgrade some of the fallacies from instead of appeal to authority, sincere, heartfelt plea to authority. Please come help us. <laughs> well, they did invent a new fallacy to create 
the religion. Uh, so if anybody knows the name of that fallacy, if it already exists, I'd like to know. What I got out of this is when he blasphemed, it told me everything. He fears flat earth because he fears God existing. He's probably been a really naughty boy. What he fears is the fact that the people he was told were stupid and he believed were stupid his whole life are turning out to be not stupid, turning out to be correct. And that's what's going on there. He hasn't even got as far as there being a creator. He's just finding out that all the stuff he believed in is wrong. And all he's got to back it up is numbers and nonsense. No, I'm, I'm going a few layers deeper than that, but you're... 100% right there. Uh, but I'm going a few layers deeper where his own conversation he has with his self that no one knows is when I die, I believe there's nothing and I will give account for my actions to no one. And these guys are saying something about my model that allows that to be true. And they're destroying my model of heliocentrism, Big Bang, the whole deal. So I've, this is very disturbing. I'm going to attack on the surface arguments, but no one knows deep inside I'm afraid to stand before a holy, righteous God and give account for my life. Yeah, we can't divine That's the guy's fear. Really fear. Look, I don't know why the guy's scared shitless, but I know he is. <laughs> I know. And he's lashing out at me and using a whole string of fallacies along the way and chanting. I mean, he's textbook baller i see that type of behavior in comments all day every day that's how they behave now because it's very very stressful for them and you can hear the stress in their voices i've i've debated atheists and agnostics so many times that the way they get around showing that fear i just described is to use evolution and the false so-called proofs of evolution when they fall apart the real reason comes out. I, they've even told me the real reason after long debates. So I'm probably statistically correct here because I can sense it. He's afraid of something. He can't be afraid of you and your show. That's just a little corner of the internet when 99% of the Western world believes what he believes. What's he doing here? Well, he doesn't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily have to be true of, you know, because there are, you know, Christian heliocentrists. I mean, it's just he his reality is tied up in a consensus belief. And you could you could tell that he wouldn't accept the truth on you know, just on it being the truth. So he has to appeal to consensus, he has to appeal to the audience. He made all these other appeals, but he he was doing that out of a deep rooted fear that he might be wrong. The Christian heliocentrism is because scientism has invaded the church and pastors are too weak to tell the truth of Genesis and the rest of the Bible. But they at least know there's a God and falsely claim God made heliocentrism. This guy doesn't want a God. I've never heard really like that. I think you're that reading really a bit too much into his blasphemy personally. Then why, did, then why did he blaspheme God? I don't how could know. any man? How could any man who knows there's a holy God one day he's going to meet consciously, purposely blaspheme? Bola, can you mute? No, it would be very disturbing. It would be like, oh, oh, I, I didn't mean that. It slipped out. I don't mean that. He didn't come back with that. I've, I've played golf with people who aren't Christians, and they accidentally blaspheme, and they apologize for it because they realize what they did. But I don't think he blasphemed intentionally. I just think it was in the moment. He just used the phrase of Stalin. <clears throat> I don't think God is even anywhere within that guy's life. I, I just think that, or, or, or the, the thought of there being a creator. He's purely focused on Nathan, and Nathan's, what you call, little corner of the internet, is the very corner that he's cornered in. His back is to the wall. And that's, so to him, it's not a lit corner. It's the biggest corner ever. So he has never, I don't think he even got as far as asking, maybe there is a creator. He never even got there. He's purely focused on Nathan and that pseudoscience Oakley, I'm going to get him. 
you know, this pseudo scientist Oakley thinks he doesn't, even though he doesn't claim to be a scientist or claim science for this black swan, I'm going to get him. That's why he's up, it's that's where he's at. Sorry, John. If only. I was just laughing. It's like, if only I could shut up Nathan Oakley, then the horizon would be geometric again. You know? <laughs> yeah. As you said, it's proving the exist disproving the existence of bread with toast. Well, he didn't come and lead with evidence. He came and led with temper tantrums and non-stop talking. Well, I just want to say why well done to Nathan. He kept sorry, so a lot. Just one second. Yeah, I just want to say well done to Nathan. He kept super calm for that whole time. <laughs> yeah, Unlike relatively, me this morning. Relatively calm, I'd say. <laughs> no, kudos to you, Nathan. This, is, this will make your show go a long way if you keep this up. Well, it's it's, it's sure. not often that the, the pain in their voice is so obvious, whereas in that case it was really, really obvious pain in his voice. So you can't really, you know, not detect that. I stepped on something solar, I was going to say, so I think solar wanted to say something. Go on, solar. Thanks, thanks. I just wanted to make the point that I, I can't understand how these guys can claim both a geometric horizon and a refracted horizon, because it has to be one or the other. So them saying that we flat earthers deny refraction when we're the only ones who brought refraction into the discussion in the first place, because it's not a geometric physical sphere edge and then they interchangeably jump between geometric sphere edge and refracted horizon and think that they've somehow won by doing that it's never makes sense to me right we've only got one horizon and the horizon in the begging the question proof of nothing perspective hijacking earth curve calculator was geometric before it was debunked by the black swan but with that i'm going to say a huge massive enormous thank you first and foremost to both discord and g plus panels for making today's live show possible if you are watching this on either nathan oakley 1980 or nathan oakley premiering streams however then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow i've been nathan oakley and i'll see you all in the next video <laughs>
is um, I think he could be retired now, but he's uh, he was at least a nuclear physicist, and he was the head physicist over one of the biggest nuclear plants in the world. So if he tells you the horizon is not geometric, does that mean the horizon is not geometric? Because he tells you. Just a simple ad hoc yeah. policy. That's all it is. I think he was an overall liar. He made up all kinds of shit. That guy wasn't well, a physicist. Uh, no I way. think Bri Brian's assessment was the most accurate. He, he wants to, to believe there's this ethereal, all-knowing scientific body that knows how wrong we are and how to prove it. He doesn't, and that's caused him great distress. He can't get around the arguments. So when he comes in and appeals to me being stupid and uneducated, he's saying, look, you can't listen to this guy. He's stupid and uneducated. There's other people out there, audience, that are much smarter that you should be listening to, and they say it's a globe. Now, I can't get around any of these arguments, but I am definitely going to come here to tell you, the audience, that's him, that you need to listen to the experts because these guys are idiots. And getting that out made him feel a bit better for a second or two. Yeah, I, that's the reason I about fell into that trap. I was about to list my credentials, but that wouldn't have done any good. It wouldn't have. It well, he threw out the it. old pizza planet ridiculous um, straw man as well. Yeah, that's the Toy Story defense, isn't it? Toy Story defense? What? Yeah, in the Toy Story movie, they go to Pizza Planet. That's yeah. Like the, <laughs> uh, I see. Yeah, it's it's just placing the your reification of a flat Earth model in a heliocentric paradigm. You know, it's it's a garbage argument. What I would say is, anybody, any outsider who doesn't know anything about any of this, that just happens to come across this show within the next short while. There's no way that they're not going to question the globe model. It's like, is that what we got? You know, because Nathan did, I think it was 18 times, Nathan, you, you rebutted what he, yeah, we, whether it's four, whether it's 18, whether it's 25, the thing is, you rebutted his claims. You gave him a rebut. He, he, all he could come back with was attack, personal attack, personal attack and rubbish and consensus. Like, he is not bringing anyone to the globe side or keep them there. He's going to push people away, just like Rumpus and Brenda did. Well, this is the pressure cooker. Uh, it's This is the release, isn't it? You know, there's not going to be people, the people like him that just can't bear to hear us talking about how it must be flat and elevation angles prove it's flat and seeing it in the comments. And they're on the edge of sanity as it is. This is going to push him over the edge. I've said this, this is just witnessing the start. Yeah, that because that is not sane behaviour. If that guy was sane a couple of years ago, he's not anymore. I can relate, though. And then that. I can relate in terms of, you know, how we've described people who don't really know the Earth's flat, they haven't really got a good handle on the arguments and they get really frustrated and behave like that with Globers when they... They don't have an app, you know. They don't have a way around some logical fallacy argument they're presented with. I've seen flat earthers get the same way. I've been the same way, and I can relate. When you can't get around something, and it just keeps you up at night fr with frustration. You know, I remember it really distinctly during the Isle of Man discussions because we didn't really understand what we were doing, and he doesn't. He doesn't understand how to defend the globe. He doesn't got any good arguments. He's heard people say refraction. He's like. I need to say refraction and have that be the end, not have you come back with anything. That's how I need this argument to be settled. You accepting refraction. Let me explain it to you. And I go, well, yeah, but refraction means it's not geometric anymore. No, I need you to just stop the argument right there. And if you don't, I'm just going to talk through anything you say in response because then I don't have to hear it. The equivalent of going, la, 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 with fingers in the ears. You know, even if you accept refraction like that, when you move on to the curved adjacent argument, it, it's a it's destructive for them when they want to claim, you know, dip angles. It's 
So what, when they need straight lines to stuff, suddenly they've got to relinquish the fact they've just claimed and argued extensively about how refracted it is. OK, so what about when we measure elevation angles? We're going to be doing angle measurements, that's straight lines. What's that you say? It's all refracted always and we should understand it. And we should spend an entire live show listening to you tell us how we don't understand how it's all bent in the air. Sphere shaped. Yeah, we've got to understand how it's all bent. But now we're going to take an angle to something. What are you going to do now, Fundy? Of course, we didn't get that with, that far with him because at that point, he's telling us how we can see a geometric horizon and here's how we can't see it. Yeah, the, he was demonstrating uh, uh, the ball foo fallacy right off the jump because he said, uh, we do have a geometric horizon. You said we, we don't see a geometric horizon. He said we do, and then he explained why we don't. So, yeah, that's the ball foo fallacy as far as I can tell. Yeah, we don't we see do, the we actual. Do. We don't, we don't. He said the rumpers. We do, we do. We do have a geometric horizon. We just don't see the actual position of geometry that would be measurable. Here's how we don't see the actual geometric horizon. So let me get it clear. You're now going to tell us how we don't see the actual geometric horizon that we do see. That's right. Oh, we're all clear. Hooray. This is how we see the thing that we don't see. Clear? I'll use an R value that was measured from the geometric horizon I'm explaining we can't see. Cool? No? La, 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 you're not going to respond to this. Don't forget that R value was first measured flat at the base of the mountain. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't get that far I, either. I, actually, I want to address something, as I said a few minutes ago, Nathan. The flat earthers to be the same with ballers. No, I don't think it's the same thing. The frustration is saying, there's, this, the frustration is still frustration. And there has been times where there's been roadblocks thrown up and I have to use a bit of logic and research to get around them. But my frustration at any point was always due to, I knew that I was right, because I knew from word go that if it was a globe, then certain things have to be true and they're not. So with flat earth frustration, it's more like we know that we're right, but we couldn't always support it. But he doesn't know that he's, where he's right or wrong. He just has a belief. And that's a different thing. We had a knowing no, that we were right. No, no, he's not talking about us. He's talking about there are some flat earthers that do not understand why it's flat. They just believe it. Yeah, and but even at that, they know. Our... Yeah, yeah even at that, they know they're not wrong. No, no, no. They you're don't. being too kind, Brian. Yeah. You're, you're assuming, which I've made the mistake of, that everybody's at that that particular level that you're at and realizes that it's not a globe because certain things don't work. There's going to be people who don't realize the certain things that should but don't work on a globe. There's people that won't be anywhere near that level that still go around chanting it. And when they get challenged by somebody who offers them a formal logical fallacy like antipodal star rotation in the northern and southern hemisphere, begging the question, they don't recognize it and can't argue against it and get frustrated and angry when they lose the argument to a fallacy that they didn't know because they haven't got a good enough knowledge of their argument. I'm saying comparably, I've, and me personally, I'm going to speak for myself and for people I've seen doing it, when they don't know how to get around an argument or don't know that it's a fallacy, they'll demonstrate similar behaviour to him. Well, there, there's a problem uh, now because it does go one step farther because you're talking about back when they had a positive claim that you had trouble debunking. They're at a point where we have a positive claim. They have to accept as truth in order to move forward with the discussion. Exactly. A unique position has befell us in 2022. Elevation angle is a position we both, we both must accept on flat and globe sides of the argument in order to move forward and actually measure an angle. That's two straight lines. It must be so. Must be flat. That's how elevation angles are measured. So... The unique position being that it's not that they have to argue against our position being wrong. They've got to accept our position as being right before they can move forward and argue how, how wrong it is. It's nuts. Yeah, so it's it, that has to be a lot worse, I guess. Uh, but I can still understand the frustration. It's not like you're debunking a positive claim. And then, it's not like you're debunking a positive claim and then your claim's automatically true. This is well, this us making a positive claim that debunks their positive claim that they have to accept in order to make any further claims. Well, 
the fact they have to agree is, before they can deny hold it. Hold on, Alwyn. Brian's been trying to get that in for ages. Go, go on, go on. <laughs> well, I've been in deserve that because I stepped on John twice. Uh, my timing is out today when it comes to uh, button in. Um, the fact of the matter is that celestial navigation is a real thing and it, was, it has been used for centuries. Now, their whole claim when I first came into it in 2015, from then on and before that, was there centuries or whatever, thousands of years of globe proof. Yet we are pre presenting something that has been used at sea in different formats, right, that show the Earth cannot be a globe. And it's been used for hundreds of years. And it can be used right up to today. And that absolutely kills them. Because we have the very evidence that they claimed to have for it. It would be since Betty turned it up in the debate eight years ago, let's just say. Right, they've said we've got hundreds, if not thousands, of years of navigating and using the world spherically. And we go, no, you haven't. Here's a methodology that's hundreds of years old that, no matter how far you go back, describes it in the same manner, using elevation angles of a flat plane. And it's still used today. And further to that, it's strengthened by the fact that when they use a sextant in a plane, and they detail, I've watched loads of videos over the weekend on this, just by coincidence, they're, descri they're doing what Tenth Man describes in terms of having a parallel line to the GP of the star below them. Well, you've got to have uh, two straight lines running directly down from the sky, parallel, vertical lines from above the GP of the star down to the ground and above the plane down to the ground from the zenith to the ground. So that when they point the sextant out and it's established as level with the bubble inside it, you've got a parallel line that still gives them 90 degrees to the star. So taking it out of your sea based using a horizon and correcting it so they've got some wiggle room to say all oh, that corrections because it's a globe, well, no. The moment you use a sextant in a plane, you're using parallel lines to the ground with the exact same method, meaning that it must be flat on the ground and flat and straight exactly as being done with the trig between you and that line at 90 degrees, both on the ground and in the air. Well, again, if the ground below you is curving away, those lines diverge. So they're never parallel. You'll never get 90, ever has to be flat. Yeah, your co-altitude distance would be so far greater than the nautical mile distance that would be on the surface and it, with those divergent zeniths. That it would be, it, it'd just be craziness to think that that would work. There's no 90 possible. There, there has to be four 90s <laughs> for right. it to work. Well, if you've got those um, diverging zeniths at altitude... The dome that we discussed in the pre-show, you weren't here, Brian, that's the radius value that would go across um, the actually flat area of equal altitude that when projected up to a curved surface leaves you with a curvilinear radius rather than a flat normal area of equal altitude radius. So if you're in the sky, that's exaggerated more at altitude those two lines widen that's what brian's saying the further you go up well not only do they not widen the method that you use remains exactly the same you're still getting 90 degree to the star's gp even if you're in the air it's not getting worse it's exactly the same meaning it must be parallel earth must be flat below for the 90 degree in the air to translate straight down onto the ground accurately can only be flat and work. Yeah, because even what, what they don't understand is if you take, let's say, a 45, let, let's say 2,500 miles, let's just say, right? I won't go into 45 degrees, 2,500 miles on their globe, right? The, diverging, the divergence of those zeniths, right? The GP, the, sorry, the observer zenith and the zenith going up from the GP to the star, the divergence of them would be so massive that the, the distance covered in, mile, in let's say, in, a, in minutes of degree from the observer zenith to the zenith of the, G, uh, of the star 
would be so huge, you'd never be able to translate that um, the minute, of, minute of degree from nautical mile down onto the surface of the earth. Because the, the nautical mile distance would be way further than the, than the distance between the GP and the observer. It doesn't work. You can't use diverging zeniths. And the, their globe can't not have di diverging zeniths. You cannot have parallel zeniths on a globe. No. Yeah, there's a whole multitude of reasons why they've got to correct it flat and work off a plane. Well, number one, they need to make angle measurements, which means two straight lines, not one curved. And they need parallel zeniths. They need the GP to line up at 90 degrees with the ground and that to be 90 degrees with your position at your zenith. And they need that to be exactly the same no matter what altitude you measure it with. So as you go up 30,000 feet and you establish a horizontal with a bubble, you look out to the star and you still establish 90 degrees to it, parallel to your position. Well, that's parallel with the ground. That's what you're trying to do it for, to figure out where the hell you are in the air in relation to the ground. So it must line up directly below the star. 90 degrees on the ground, 90 degrees in the air. Can only be flat for that to work. Can't work on a curved surface. Does work, still have sextants on planes to this day as a backup. Why? Because they work. And have worked for hundreds of years, back to the original point. They say it's been a sphere and used as such for hundreds, if not thousands of years. No, it hasn't. It's been navigated flat for hundreds and hundreds of years. And still is. Nathan, can you go to the last post I just put in Master B? Sure. Sextant altitude corrections. Yeah, 1605 dip D of horizon is the angle by which the visible horizon differs from the horizontal at the eye of the observer, i.e. the sensible horizon or astronomical horizon, you know, the one that's at your eye line. Thus, it applies only when the visible horizon is used as a reference and not when an artificial horizon, either internal or external to the sextant, is used. It applies to all celestial bodies. If the eye of the observer were at the surface of the Earth, visible and sensible horizons would coincide and there would be no dip. This is never the situation aboard ship, however, and at any height above the surface, the visible horizon is normally below the sensible horizon. As shown in figure 1605, normally then, an altitude measured from the visible horizon is too great and the correction is negative. It increases with greater height of the observer's eye. Because of this, it is sometimes called height of eye correction. There's your parallel. Perfect, thank you. The Tenth Man, you're not a scientist, so we can ignore this, right? Uh, yeah. Citation from their books. But this came from their books with someone who was probably gone through an educational system and has degrees and, you know, academia backing them. So how about if I quote a hostile witness every time? Am I okay then, John? Well, uh, if I use the all or nothing fallacy, I could say that because that guy uh, doesn't believe it's flat, then his citation wouldn't be proof of how flat it is. This is funny because uh, the only books out there are heliocentric books uh, and sextant, and they always show the image of a circle. And, um, you know, I, I have those you know, posted already in Master B, but we don't have to go to them. But they show the, it all working on top of a circle because they have to keep pushing the narrative of a globe. But then when you look into the actual doings of a sextant, it can't work off a curve adjacent. So therein is the contradiction, uh, the law of non-contradiction found in all these books. Fallacious reasoning and argument are found in these books. And that is what I'm highlighting, is in their own books, as they push the globe, they have to reason when it comes to brass tacks that you need a flat surface to make it work. So 
that's what they're not getting. They keep going, well, why does it have a picture of a, 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 yeah, a sphere under it? Dude, they're lying to you. <laughs> well said, Tim. Well said. Seems to me like this uh, psychopath globe guy who was on. Um, this is how the angle argument has got them now. They're, they're not addressing the angle. Well, he didn't. He went back to the black swan and refraction, and um, he he wouldn't talk about angles because he wouldn't have a chance. Well, the sextant argument from the beginning was going to lead them back to the black swan, and they go hand in hand. Um, it's been said that black swan disproves the globe model because we beg the question for him in the modus tollens, and it doesn't meet up to the standards. Whereas the sextant proves the flat nature of Earth. They both go hand in hand. Well, it does a little bit more than that, because let's be honest, we're kind of forgetting the progress we've made recently. Elevation angles to Polaris is what created the globe model. So it doesn't matter what claim any of them make, because all their claims are based on a model that's built off of a flat plane, because, because it has to be. So everything true. they say, the, the, anything they say, refraction, and, uh, all values this, and we, we can't see the geometric horizon, but we know it's there. You know? No, the reason it's only in the maths is because all it is is a calculation based on, it's a back-engineered calculation based off a flat plane elevation angles to Polaris. That's 100% true, Brian. Yeah, the, the debate ended when um, I guess this come out, it, the the controversy is over. There's nothing to that they argue about now. Um, past this, you know, like they'll accept that there has to be a flat plane to get the angle, and then they'll move on to want to argue about how it's still a sphere. Well, that's just nonsensical. The moment they accept that they're measuring angles from a flat plane. The, the argument's done. They do that every time they do dip correction at sea with the natural horizon. Anybody from Discord got any comment on today's live show? The Triggered Fundy? I didn't think that there was going to be anyone worse than Rumpus. But he did. He took the plate of it today to the point where he said that he was going to, I don't know who he said that to, but he said he was going to punch someone through a screen. That's how triggered he was. Oh, Nathan. Nathan. He's going to beat Nathan <laughs> up. He's mad that Nathan's robbing Yeah, everybody. that's what it was. He's yeah. making millions. Nathan, how dare you make money? No, he also, you education level? he also preceded that by saying, if I could teleport through my screen. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. That's, that's insane. I recognize that voice. That's Ed Masto. No, Ed Masto is just you the damage. Damage. This argument, I, know I mean, this. A few globers in there today. A few more globers than usual. One more this time. This is just the beginning. It's only going to get worse from here. It's only going to get worse. I agree. I agree. This is the beginning. The, the pressure has got too much. And it's starting to, it's got to release somewhere and telling me I'm an uneducated liar in the face of 18 to 20 rebuttals. That's what they've got. Well, he's oh, yeah. I think that guy's obviously planned, he's planned that, um, he's planned that out today, I think, obviously. There's more Globers in that room and he's planned it. They, so this is how they, they're going to try and disrupt the show and talk like this and this is what they're going to do. Yeah, it's because of the argument. Listen, it's because of the argument, guys. Tenth man, you are ace. This argument has them losing their cotton picking minds. When you say just I, 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 I welcome, I, I welcome, I welcome saying, more people. Are you saying? Are you saying? Are you saying we're going to get more unpaid physicists? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> First of all, you're late, QE. I caught the unpaid well, physicist part. That's all I needed. 
That is that mess, though, right? No. No. I have no idea. But this no, is what we it's want. it's not at Masto. Well, it's the same spirit. The, this is what we want. They were boycotting. Now they can't boycott because they're getting so killed. So now they're coming for a second front or a third front or a fifth front. So, yeah, bring it. We want to hear your arguments. And if you're going to come the way this guy did, you lose the minute you start talking. What was his argument? Refraction is the answer to the black swan. That was the whole basis of his argument. Yeah, yeah, we had that day one, <laughs> 2020, first Jan. Did you thank him? <laughs> <laughs> For what? For falling face planted right into the trap? Didn't we go over this? <laughs> What, for two years? Yeah, we did. He was more concerned about you producing a scientific paper than actually addressing the black swan argument. Yeah, the moment someone like that asks for a scientific paper when literally nobody at any stage on either side has claimed science, you know they're a complete dipshit. Yeah, he was just abusing you. Not no, really. he was he was getting very triggered. I could tell he he was trying to get to Nathan, and Nathan wouldn't give it to him. So I mean, kudos again. I know Tenthman mentioned it, but kudos to you for being extremely patient because I don't know, man. Like I was getting triggered. I was like, dude, shut the hell up and let him speak. And they always yeah, seem to bring up poor Nathan. They always seem to bring up that other black swan image where the water is still cutting the the base of the first platform. And like John Cuey did in the beginning of his presentations was that the black swan showed that one because that was also a black swan, that the horizon is still at six point something miles and not at 1.22, which it would have to be based on that observer height. But they always come in here with that second image, acting as though that second image debunks the first image. Their, their lack of comprehension of the matter is it's really evident. Well, it's the lack of the okay, knowledge of the namesake. It's called the Black Swan. Well, why is it called the Black Swan? Well, because the premise is that all horizons are Earth curve. That's the premise. All swans are white. All horizons are Earth curve. The horizon blocks boats' buildings. Right? Are we all familiar with the argument? Yeah, bloody hell, there's old maths calculator based on it. That's the claim. So that's the claim. We've got Earth curve. Okay. So your claim is we've got Earth curve and it's the horizon. We only need to show one example that disproves that. One. And it stops being a geometric Earth curve edge horizon. Likewise, if you show one black swan, it disproves the premise that's being claimed. All swans are white. All horizons are Earth curve. No, they're not. You've only got to show one example of it not being. It doesn't matter if you show another one the following day that was at 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height and feet. In other words, rather than being at six miles or whatever the first obstruction point of the uh, oil rig is, it's like, yeah, okay, let's see it at 1.2. Oh, it is. So what? The day before it wasn't. So it's not physically limiting your view based on its physical spheriness. It changes with the weather. One example's all you need. Just one. Did you say, did you hear where he said, let's take the average of where the horizon is over a year? And then we'll, you know, like, but once it exceeds the geometric let's, limitations of a sphere, the radius 3959, then you can't say it has a radius of 3959 anymore because it's exceeded that geometric limitation. And like, he didn't get that let's at all. Let's talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. And let's talk about the image in question. Dr. Bob uh, tried to bring this up to Ranty back in the day, that second image. Ranty looked up the day of the observation and found out that there was a tidal bore that day, which increased the tidal shelf by four feet. <laughs> she had four feet additional hump of water, right, which has nothing to do with any alleged curvature. He told this to Dr. Bob, right, after he looked up the data. I'm pretty sure he showed it live on screen. And Dr. Bob looked at it and said, oh, still the horizon. I remember that. That was actually footage that Travis had taken, Travis uh, Plain True had taken uh, earlier that day. 
and Dr. Bob was using it uh, on Randy's show to try and debunk the black swan or something. And because Travis was at, was at a one foot observer, observer height, and Randy had already got all the information about it before Dr. Bob came in. And when Dr. Bob was presented with it, he just had to, he, he just had to, believe, had to leave. He accused Randy of insulting him or something. He just left because he couldn't, couldn't refuse it at the time. But that second image is still a black swan. So regardless of any title well, bulge that's, or no, anything this is a else. Solar. That second image you're talking about is not what uh, Citation is talking about. The second image you're talking about is a different image taken by BLMS B69 on a different day. What, what, what Citation is talking about was footage taken by Travis Green troops from the same location. So, but that's it. Let's just address the second image. What does it show? The horizon being in a different place from the first image. So the horizon is not geometric then. That's the whole point. Because Rue has presented that to me in a debate right, within two weeks or a week or something. But within a week, I think it was, of the Black Swan. And I was debating him on Ranty's, and he presented that image. And I said, so is that the geometric horizon? And he couldn't say yes. Because it will come in a different position from the way it was there today. It can't be geometric if it's in a different position. And that was the end of that. They don't understand what the word means. They literally don't understand what geometric means. Earth measure? Yeah. Well, isn't that kind of... Didn't that, I'm sorry. didn't that dovetail to... Triangle, angle, triangle measurement, trigonometry. Isn't that the same mistake there? <laughs> There's no triangles in trig. Shh. <laughs> QE pointed out something interesting from, from that discussion with the pig liar. You were saying that, according to them, their claim seems to be that, that there isn't a triangle when you're talking about 90 degrees. In other words, you can have a 90 degrees but not have a triangle. Yeah, there are, that's what I caught from... I listened back to it. I just couldn't hear. It, it was just too chaotic, right? But he kept saying it. He goes, yeah, I'm talking about a right angle, but not a triangle. Uh, Baltards, I got a question. Do you think that you got a right angle and no triangle? <laughs> Uh, citation, please. <laughs> Clowns. Oh, what, do you, what do you want? Someone I, say my name? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that citation. Not citation, police. Citation, please. But I, I thought, I always thought geometry was just the study of shape, which is kind of, I guess that's kind of begging the question that Earth has a shape. Never mind. No. All I know is Bob. No, no. There's no shape implied by oh, saying you're measuring Earth. Then when I ask you, uh, or you challenge them, go ahead and show a right angle uh, without a triangle, right? They'll show you an open-ended triangle. <laughs> Yeah, but if you don't draw the line, it's not a triangle. Or they'll be like Bob, the pseudo fallacy guy, and not be able to define a triangle or a circle. Well, as far as the argument goes, it's still irrelevant because you still need uh, a flat line to have a 90, right? Like you need still need the, you can't have a curved adjacent and a 90. Yeah, That's... What what's the 92? Oh, the GP of the star, from where? Your position. And what's it got to be to have 90? Flat. It's a perpendicular relationship. The minute they say 90, they're saying it's a right angle triangle. Yeah. So when they say... I, the favorite uh, one... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry to interrupt. No, my favorite one from that dumbass was the dip correction magically poofs a celestial horizon into existence. That's becoming my favorite one now that I'm thinking about it. That That's priceless. Yeah, but even then, they're yeah. conflating two differential horizons that they claim in their own diagrams, which is the geoidal horizon and the celestial horizon. The celestial horizon pierces the center of the Earth, and they're trying to say that the, the infinite plane they create on the Earth is the celestial horizon. It's not. What he was doing, if I may, what he was doing is he's using a true horizontal where his eye is on the sextant uh, telescope. And he says, I need to make this horizontal a right angle so I can subtract from 90. How do I do that if I don't have a bubble sextant telling me right now that I'm holding this thing horizontally, especially when I'm on the ocean and the, the boat is moving left and right, up and down? So I got to shoot the natural horizon. So in shooting the natural horizon, he must do dip correction. We've gone through the citations all day today. So he gets a baseline from doing that exercise, which then he transposes and says, okay, fine. Now, because I corrected the earth for a right angle, I could subtract from 90. I got a flat baseline by doing dip to the star's GP to me. Now I could assume my telescope is parallel to that. That's what they're doing. Yeah, they don't know the difference between why you use a bubble sextant in one scenario and why you use a, a not a bubble sextant in the other. They don't understand why you need the horizon mirror for one and you don't need it for the other. Because in one, you're not using the visible horizon. You're using a parallel to the visible horizon. And in the well, other, you are using the visible horizon because you need to do dip and height of eye correction to correct the vertex from the oil line down to the water underneath the boat. Uh, you, so yeah, you no, no way. Plane. No way. In the boat. No way. You're, you're giving them too much credit. Start off with ask them what a bubble is. <laughs> in, 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 in the bubble in the bubble sex and you bring the sun or star in the center of the bubble that is your horizon that is the artificial horizon is the bubble nah it's a zenith it's a zenith establisher yes it's a zenith establisher now, I'm serious though. you think I'm kidding now you think I'm kidding you guys are PhDs you gotta ask him what a fucking bubble is that's uh, where you need to start. A, a bubble is gas pressure in a container. Very good. That's the spirit. <laughs> yeah, but let's good. check it out. Al, you got it, brother. But let's check it out. So they claim they can get this 90 degrees, right, shot through the center of the Earth with their space plumb bobs and bubble levels. Guess what? That doesn't occur ubiquitously across the globe, quote, unquote, because... They forgot to calculate the Brenda force. They're Brenda just assuming force. geometry alone that this from the surface straight down, you can get a 90. You think and that's Brenda what they're force, All right, well, look, they can assume a lot because they're just a bunch of assumers. But let's not forget that in their model, the centripetal force and the centrifugal force are not in the same vector. So plumb bobs would not hang straight to the center of the Jesus. earth. You're way far. You, you're PhD, dude. You're in their model, they don't have a model, number one. You, you need to start off with a bubble. I'm telling you. So get a globe tart in here. Let's ask him what a bubble is. And you'll the see best, what I mean. Citation, the best <laughs> assumers, the best assumers come from the Navy. They're called rear admirals. Oh yeah, what what is the uh, sorry Tim, that was a good one. <laughs> what is the difference between a right angle and a right angle triangle? I want them to define <laughs> the actual difference between the two of those. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Ryan's on it. Do a show on that. <laughs> well I have a triangular tool. Listen, I have a triangular tool and an L shaped tool, and they're both called squares. <laughs> Brian did a show on it. He showed that if you do that, you have diverging zeniths and you would be lost all day long. Well done. How can it be a square if it's only got two sides? Obviously, it's not a square. 
Oh. And the two ends of the square, in name only, aren't linked together. So you can't call it a triangle. No, they do. When they say subtract from 90, they're immediately saying subtract from a right angle. That's what 90 is. I think the discussion earlier between Citation Police and uh, QE was to say that your thought processes, Citation Police, are on a different level to the debate that we are presented you're never going to have a, a an opportunity to express that to an opponent when your opponent, like today, wants to say you're uneducated as a response. That's the level that we're dealing with. You know, it's it, it, it seems like, wow, we had a guy come in with an argument today. No, no, we had a guy came in that threw a lot of verbal abuse and chanted refraction a lot. That's what we've got. And dropping F-bombs. Yeah, I can't really talk about that, are we? Yeah, we're, we're, we're on a completely different level <laughs> to them now. That's the problem. That's why it's so quiet. Well, they come in here telling us perspective and refraction as though they're trying to educate us. When we've been saying that same thing to them for the last five or six years, seven years that refraction is definitely something that needs to be taken into consideration and incorrect. not an r-based atmospheric refraction. incorrect that's an equivocation fallacy he did, some, he did get there in the end he said it's not our based refraction but there that was the that was the crux of the argument 20 times that he had it you're equivocating between refraction and R-based refraction, sphere-shaped air refraction, atmospheric refraction, 7 over 6 R refraction. Equivocating between Snell's law refraction, which refraction is, and their fairy tale terrestrial refraction, which they conjured, that has no less than two major paradoxes. What are they? Can't get a geometric horizon to refract a horizon with the basis of the calculation you're using to refract it with. That's the first paradox. Now, the paradox is they need R. What, well, that's not the first. That's the second. The first one is what? Not you. I don't want you. You already know. Air isn't sphere-shaped. You can't have something yeah. that's not bonded in any way, shape, or form, taking the shape of non-containment and bending. Yes, those are the two. Thanks for giving up the answers. Nathan just wants the correct answers to come out on the show. <laughs> <laughs> that was the paradox, yeah, though. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I've let out a cat out of a bag. That was a 20 rendition summary of what the guy got. He got the Arwinian paradox 20 times. That's what it is. The paradox of measuring a geometric horizon to give you an R to apply the R to a refraction value that moves the horizon into a position you couldn't get an R from anymore. That's a paradox. Likewise, what are you doing? You're saying that the light is moving through sphere-shaped air. Air isn't sphere-shaped. So there's paradox number two. Yep. And you need the flat plane to get the off angle to the horizon to assume it's a drop angle that's curving away from you. Boom! <laughs> yeah, so it's an entirely um, circular argument that you draw on a piece of paper and then fold the piece of paper in half and then crumple it up. It's a circular argument without an R value. Exactly. That's why I told Nathan that's a circular argument with two different radiuses. <laughs> An infinite permutation of radii. Because remember, remember what uh, when um, Rumpus snapped, you know, he basically said, Inf infinite R, I could see my own ass. Yeah, if you ignore all the fraction of light, assuming that if you stretch out their Muppet vision to a straight line, 
then you can see anything at any distance. There's no diffraction limit. So in their description of seeing infinite over six or infinite over an hour or whatever they describe it as to see all the way around the sphere and then back to see your own ass in a telescope, that is possible in Muppet vision. You just draw a circle and go, there you go. It's bending through the sphere-shaped air, paradoxically, at a rate of R, paradoxically, that we couldn't get from a horizon that's refracted. But in so doing, they're saying that you can see 24,000 miles. No, you can't. No telescope can do that. Let alone bend light through a sphere-shaped air that's paradoxical. They don't have any perspective. The globe doesn't have it. So it's a bit of an outrage when people come along and start telling us about optics. It's like, well, what are you talking about? We say the phenomenon knows the horizon is an optical phenomenon. You say it's a physical geometric sphere edge and then tell us that it's refracted with an R-based refraction that you can't get if you can't measure the R from the horizon. Uh, did that kid claim that we don't know optics? This was his argument? Yeah, yeah he said that Nathan didn't have like a degree in optics or something like that. He wasn't a scientist right. in optics. He did the kid my... demonstrate how the angular resolution limit and um, Fraunhofer diffraction and Fresnel diffraction actually affect your vision? No, he didn't do that. Did he also recognize that 7 over 6R is a category error because it actually inflates the radius of the Earth, which is a geometrical problem, not an optical problem? Did he mention any of that? Probably not. I did. I mentioned the fact that his geometric-based R-based refraction isn't optical. It's based in Muppet vision. Uh. Hey, Nathan. Hello. Hi, I was just curious. Is your mute button broken? Hey, is your trigonometry button broken? No, it's not broken. No, it is. Why'd you ask? That kind of epic midnight. ass kicking. You're gonna see. Oh that. yeah, you can kick. And Let him go. Just, just stop. Cram. Munch I don't know idiot. why he's opened with that. He wants to trigger it to cause discourse confusion before he makes his claim. Just oh, and go. then he left. The coward that he is. He already wow. left. What? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he, does believe, he does believe that circles can have a curvilinear radius. So, I mean, <laughs> what hope is there? Yeah, he left without clarifying that. Exactly. I think he just wanted the sound, but... He wanted to be part of the show. Oh, brother. He is so delusional. Yeah, because he's he... going to snip it out, apparently. That's his, yep. that's his um, goal. Yeah. That boy is so later. delusional. Doesn't know what a circle is. Doesn't know what triangles or trigonometry is. Unbelievable. Anyone else Start lurking? off with a bubble. Next time he comes on. in, ask him, what's Anyone? a bubble? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else lurking? Wants to have a pop? Feel free. Virus is pretty quiet. I don't get it. Bob just came in for a personal attack. Wow. No, no, no. He came. He came. No, didn't you get it in the in the way he said it? Get ready for a ass whooping. He said. So they, they're <laughs> gonna do. They're gonna. Oh, this is funny. They're gonna come in and say ninety is not a right triangle. <laughs> well, they got nothing to lose. He doesn't know what a circle is. He doesn't know what a triangle or trigonometry is. So what what's left to lose? <laughs> he honestly thinks that 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 uh, that dude gave Nathan an ass kicking kicking today. But <laughs> he was just incoherently verb verbally abusing him for most of the time and throwing completely ridiculous invalid red herring threats. <laughs> but he also yes, he also did mouth. that he he also did that on the heels of Proto after the show. He came and said, "Yeah, Proto won the debate." Yeah, I know some of you already know it, but like your man Proto didn't learn anything or didn't concede anything. He was looking well. Ranty was looking for me to be debating him. Um, this guy Proto again. It's just like, why would I do that? Why would I spend two hours trying to debate somebody who's uh, who's already been proven wrong, proven that he he's willing to lie, proven that it's, it's all a joke to him. Well, you know, it's like, why would we, any of us want to debate? You know, so I, obviously I gave my fee, I'll do it for the fee if you give me the money. 
But other than that, why, why would any of us want to do it? What, what? He already gave it his go. He proved he didn't know what he was talking about. He he was didn't know the difference. He didn't like. He was trying to say right triangle is a right angle is, is okay, but a, a right triangle is not. It's like w- w- there's only one line in the difference path. You know, he didn't know what arc meant. You know, what's the? We are way ahead of these people. What's the point in us going to debate them? They want us to go to where they are and have this big two or three hour time waste that goes nowhere. And no matter what you rebut, they will turn around straight after it and use the same arguments that they got rebutted by you in another debate. Why would you waste your time doing that? I think flat earthers in general, the people who listen to this show, really need to make a distance from these people. There's nothing there for us. It's a dump. All they need to do is read a sextant manual and watch a couple of videos and they know the world's the Earth's flat. Simple as that. No, they go they go to the books and manuals and realize what a ninety is and then say, Yeah, but look at the picture underneath it. All or nothing fallacy. That's uh Prof Phil doing exactly that, saying, oh yeah, you're referring to the sextant manuals, but why do they have pictures of globes in them? That was his argument. They all do. They all do, except when it comes time to vet out the truth and say, what's a 90? What's a right angle? How does it work? The instrument can't work without uh, a baseline, uh, and you're saying it works with a curved adjacent? Are you kidding me? So can't you spot that lie in that book? You can't spot that, Phil. Yeah, it's like I said before, you can literally, you're able to watch somebody in a boat just offshore, use a sextant, and if you sat on the beach watching them, you'll see a straight level line for the horizon. You'll see the boat, you'll see the sun, and you just draw imaginary lines down, and there's your triangle. That's it. Right, any last comments? Eventful show that it was. If not, I'm going to round out. Yeah, I'd, I'd like for you to start an online course for your diploma and certificate so that <laughs> next time someone comes here, you can wave it at them. <laughs> Woohoo! They're still going to use the argument that, oh, he's by himself. There's a consensus. So either way, it's a damn if you do, damn if you don't situation. He never named any experts, nor did he prove that he actually was a physicist, as he claimed. So I don't see why we should entertain anything about it. Well, I'm a physicist. I experienced the Earth present itself as flat and motionless. Does that make you a physicist? Physical world, I'm in it, am I not? Uh, am I not seeing that? Am I not experiencing lack of rotation? But that doesn't technically make you a physicist. Who says? Some county, some code, some law that man made? If you're on the earth, you know what the earth is. Yeah, well, it's the man that made the convention in order to name it that. If you're going to just make up your own terminology, then yeah. Okay, what does physicist mean? Look it up, tell me. I'll concede if I'm wrong. Somebody who stad- studies the natural world. That's what I do every day. I'm a farmer. World. I'm a farmer. I do that every day. In context <laughs> with have... science, you, somebody who studies cause and effect. I do that every day too. When it rains, I got to see where the water's going. And if it's uh, causing too much erosion, I have to do things to make it go another direction. So I do that every day. Okay. Any more for any more? That's cheating. I'm going to go print my own diploma tomorrow. I'll show it to you guys. Fair enough. With that, I'm going to say another huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Primary Streams. Hopefully, smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, hitting the PayPal link, and all that good stuff. 
Also below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy. And this is a particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video.